From Adamson Stadium on the campus of California University of Pennsylvania is NCAA Division II football championships here on CUTV as the California Vulcans take on the IUP Crimson Hawks. Hello and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Anthony Diagostino and alongside me today is Dylan Godet. And Dylan, this is a huge game between two ranked teams. California number six in the nation, IUP number 11 in the nation. And California is number one in the Super Region 1 and IUP number five in the Super Region. And Dylan, these two teams have met before, but before we get into the last time these two teams played, we're gonna talk about the last game for both of these squads. We're gonna start with California. They had a bye week last week because they were the number one seed. And in the PSAC Championships two weeks ago, they took on Kutztown and came away with a pretty solid victory, Dylan. Yeah, before having that bye, as you mentioned last week, California defeated Kutztown 49 to 7 in the PSAC Championship, a great win for the Vulcans. The Vulcans have been led all season by their Harlan Hill candidate Gary Brown, who was selected as the PSAC Offensive Athlete of the Year last week. And for IUP, they took on Fairmont State and IUP coming away with a statement victory against an MEC school. Yeah, definitely. IUP out routed Fairmont State 62 to 13 last week in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, after losing their own Harlan Hill candidate, Lenny Williams, due to injury, the Crimson Hawks have relied on their two running backs, freshman Samir Bullock and junior Chris Temple. And the last time these two see met, we're going to look at the series history. It goes all the way back to 1918, IEP 61-26-2. But the last time these two teams met, it was the Coal Bowl. And... California came away with the victory, Dylan, 31 to 28, and it was one for the ages. Yeah, definitely. What a great game that one was. Came down to the very last play of the game, really. So both these teams are going to be excited heading into this matchup. And now we're going to take a look at the keys to victory. We're going to start with IUP, Dylan. Break down what they need to do to enact their revenge and win this game. They need to limit California's explosive plays. Last game, they had a couple explosive plays late where Gary Brown was able to get open and have some big plays. Another one, control time possession. They're going to be able to run the ball. That's what they want to do now. They run the ball all game long. If they're able to control time possession, that could mean a, a victory for them. And then play 60 minutes against this California team. You have to play six, all 60 minutes to be and have a chance at the end to win. And for California, what do they need to do to keep this dream season alive? They need to limit penalties again. They've done so much better the second half of the season on limiting their penalties, but if they're able to limit penalties, it should help out their offense as well as their defense. They contain IUP's rushing attack. It's going to be tough. They run the ball almost 90% of the time. So if you're California, you have to be able to contain that, and you know they've been practicing all week to do just that. And then contain their emotions. It's going to be a big matchup here today against IUP. IUP's been here before. California has not. So they have to be able to contain their emotions heading into this game. We got two players we want to look at before this game and for California, Michael Keir. This Michael Keir has come into this season as you know the starting quarterback after uh, James Harris left and graduated, and he's done a fantastic job. And Michael Keir, he's not afraid to run the ball. We saw that the last time these two teams played. He had two rushing touchdowns, Dylan, and also Michael Keir. He likes to throw bombs down the field, not only to Gary Brown but his other receivers as well. And if IUP wants to win this game, they got to make sure they contain every receiver. For IUP, the other quarterback, Mike Petropola, he's coming in as the backup quarterback now. Now he's starting due to an injury to starting quarterback Lenny Williams. And Lenny Williams got hurt in that Mercier's game and hasn't played since. And Mike Petropola has really stepped up and done a great job in being that quarterback for this team. And Mike Petropola against Fairmont, he had six rushes for 51 yards. And Dylan, this guy can run the ball just like Lenny Williams used to. And he also will throw the ball if there are receivers open. So look for those two uh, players in this game to really have an impact. Yeah, definitely. Both those players are going to look to lead both of their teams. Two different styles of offense this time. You have California that's really balanced and they have to pass and throw the ball when you have IEP that just loves to ground keep the ball on the ground to control the time of possession. So it's going to be an interesting matchup here today. Well, it's a cold, dreary day for a football game, but the fans are getting ready to enjoy some Division II college football playoff action, as are we, as kickoff is next here on CUTV.
Under the lights or under the sun, no one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. This is why we love sports. It's in the way they play, free from the pressures and all the money talk. Playing for simply the love of the game, where everyone has a shot at their definition of success on and off the field. This is what we love about sports and what we can still love about college sports. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. I'm over it. We shouldn't need commercials to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. Twelve seconds left. You got to think in this situation, California stays tough on their defense, forces anything but positive yards from happening right now, and they can put the end to this Cole Bowen. Dropping back in the pocket, Aaron Terry try to pressure him. He's going to get it off, however, out to the, about the 30 yard line. He's in bounds, however, so that clock is going to run down. Now showing the end of this contest, California gets the win. What a game. It looked like IUP is very frustrated after that one as the California team runs down the field. Who knew that the reverberations that started on a Saturday night in October would still be felt on a Saturday afternoon in November? A back and forth battle that lived up to Cobol expectations under the biggest lights. Now this Saturday, two old enemies go to war. This time not for a trophy, but to take the next step in the NCAA playoffs. California. The PSAC champions returned to the NCAA playoffs for the first time since 2011. After enjoying a week off, they now try to beat their rival for a second time this season. IEP, angered by the events a month ago, have rallied since losing their leader who dazzled on that Adamson Stadium turf on that same October night. This time, it's revenge on their minds. Now the rematch of all rematches, the red and black versus the crimson and gray with everyone watching. Here we go. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium here on the campus of California University of Pennsylvania. And uh, I'm Anthony D'Agostino. Alongside me is Dylan Goodday. And Dylan, just got to mention, this is a simulcast event on both WCAL and uh, CU TV at the same time. So I uh, just want to let everyone know. Look, Dylan, at the tail of the tape now uh, between these two teams. Yeah, both high-powered offenses, 52 points per game for California, 48 for IUP. Both teams had their, their worst offensive performances against each other earlier in the season, so look for both defenses to try, to try to come out fast and early in this one. And then California's rushing attack, not as good as IUP's. IUP loves to run the ball, especially since their quarterback got injured. They have been rushing the ball effectively ever since then. But California does have the edge in the passing game with quarterback Michael Keir and receiver Gary Brown, both of which have had spectacular seasons. Look for them to try to really get going here in this one. And you see their IUP in their white uniforms, California in their red. Look at the bracket now. California is the number one seed. They had the bye. IUP number five, Shepard three, and LIU post two. Right now, Shepard is beating LIU post 14 to seven, and that is in the second quarter with 527 to go. California will be kicking off from left to right, and Dylan, the temperature, it's a cold one. 
Yeah, definitely. 43 degrees, and that will be dropping as the day heads, heads on. And then as we go into the day, there is a chance of some precipitation. We saw a little burst of rain and snow for a second, but that has went away. So we'll keep an eye on the radar, but it should be uh, no, no washout here today. should be some s typical mid-fall uh, mid weather. And Dylan, these California uniforms all red today, something we have not seen before. Yeah, definitely. The players picked this one out this week, so look for them to be hungry in these uniforms. William Brazil's kick is away, and we are underway here in the second round of the NCAA Division II Football Championships as IUP with it getting his feet moving still there and trying to get taken out of bounds, and there he does. And that was number one. Mike Mackle, Mikhail Mackle, I believe. And he tried to find Hagen defensive back Jay the Watkins the there. They look like they decided to set up a little trickeration. Couldn't get it going. California's coverage was downfield very fast and effectively, but that could have been big if they <laughs> turned the ball over there. Mike Petropola, the quarterback for IEP after Lenny Williams was injured in, in Mercyhurst. And he is in the shotgun, I believe. As Keeps it himself, getting a few yards on the carry. He gets five yards on the carry on that one. The ball Looks and like they were in a kind of a wildcat formation there. They had Chris Temple, their junior running back, in the backfield. Game so five, that's something we down. haven't seen. But they started out early in that, and it appears that that's what they're going to be going here for this play as well. Second down and four. Chris Temple is in the shotgun as he takes it. Again, going up the middle of the field. And he keeps his feet moving, getting the first down and more around the 33-yard line, and, and that seems like it's working for IUP right now. Yeah, that could be very effective against Stop California in this game. They, California has been suspect defensively against First quarterbacks that can run, and if you're in a wildcat formation, California has not seen that this season. So they could be kind of not prepared for that, and uh, that could be big dividends in favor of IUP. Chris Temple again, same formation, sending a man in motion. As that is a reverse, and it's a throw now by Mike Petropola. He's down the field, and this is going to be incomplete there to number 24, I believe. And, and that was an interesting play, Dylan. Yeah, definitely two trickeration plays early from, from IUP, and this one, Petropola was not able to find his man downfield, but they, as you can tell, they're pulling out all the stops today. They are digging deep in their playbook. They are angry after that loss. And again, Chris Temple, as he keeps it himself now on the delay, and he finds a hole and is going to get taken down at the 40-yard line, so a gain of seven on the play. And right now, California just can't stop this wildcat formation uh, by this IEP team. And IEP knows that that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to go run the ball the against this California defense. That's the only thing this defense okay. has not done well stopping is kind of a rushing quarterback. And if you have a... Wildcat formation, that's exactly what you have. So look for IEP to keep rolling with this offensive style. Chris Temple, same formation. As again, same look. He's going to run up the middle and he's going to get the first down. And he gets the ball to the 47 the yard there. line. And again, just enough yards Stop to keep it in the first down. And Chris Temple first doing what he needs to do right now. IEP is able to continue this, get five or six yards of carry and just work that ball methodically downfield, that will definitely be in their advantage because this California offense needs to be on the field to score. So if they're not on the field, IUP is doing, a, doing their job. As Petropola keeping himself now as he spins around and gets out to around the 47 yard line in California territory. So now we see Mike Petropola running the ball. Yeah, we did there, the back to their regular offensive style, a little zone replay there, but Petropolo is able to pick up, again, another six to seven yard carry. Second and five now, 12-24 on the clock. Chris Temple now in the shotgun. Mike Petropolo, the wide out to the far side. As Temple takes a snap, keeping himself once again. And he is going to keep himself moving here, and he gets taken down at the 41-yard line, and that's Temple good enough for another IUP first down. Stop it looks like he turn. stopped at the line, and then he's able to keep going forward, Dylan. Yes, Chris first Temple, as you saw in the last game against California, he's a very patient running back, and he did a great job there. Kind of got stopped, but kept his feet moving and was able to pick up the first down, and again, IUP is continuing this drive. Don't expect him to use a lot. 
run very quick in this offense. They want to methodically work this ball downfield, keep the ball out of California, California's offensive game. First and 10 from the 40, swings to the near side. Petropolo, the quarterback, can't play action. Plenty of time to throw it deep down the field, and he does. He's got a receiver open, and it is going to be complete for the touchdown. touchdown what a catch there, Dylan. My number 32, Chris Wiesner. So Chris Wiesner able to get behind the secondary there. Not many Chris guys in coverage for California. The They've been running the ball all game, but IUP goes deep here on this one and able to find his man in the end zone for a touchdown. IUP takes an early 6-0 lead here. As we see Ryan Stewart, I believe, on the kick this Stewart one. To attempt the extra point. As his kick is up and this up. one is good so the score good. now california quarter, zero iup seven. seven and okay, just zero. like that it's seven to nothing with 11 40 to go in the con in the first quarter stay tuned for more action here on CUTV and on the vulcan sports radio network from court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium as Ivy Crimson Hawks take the lead Seven to nothing here over the California Vulcans with 11.40 to go in the first quarter as his kick is away. And this is going to be returnable here. Bobbled a little bit, but is able to keep his possession there and gets the ball to the 32-yard line. So a good return there by California. Yeah, definitely a good return there by California's Gary Brown, able to work his way downfield and get round to past the 30 yard line. But again, IUP able to work the ball downfield and score on that first drive. We talked a little bit of before about California maybe coming out flat here as they had the bye week last week. And that's exactly what California was able to do and just work the ball downfield. Uh, IUP, excuse me, what IUP was able to do. So great start for, uh, for the Crimson Hawks. As Michael Keir now for California looking to come out. And make something happen here as he is in the shotgun. Sending a man in motion. As Keir takes the snap, looking to pass. And he's under some pressure there. There's a penalty flag coming. And he gets taken out at the 25-yard line. And Dylan, that's kind of what we talked about in the open. You've got to make sure you stop Michael Keir quickly before you can throw the ball. And right like that, they blast through the line and an offensive holding call happens. Yeah, definitely. The IUP came out. This, this team has come out hungry in this game. Again, forced a holding there in California because they just blew through that line. So look for California to try to get things going now as they're, they're facing some adversity for one of the first times this whole season. As Michael Keir coming back out on offense, second and 15 for the Vulcans. We'll take a look at the defensive starters here for IUP. Look for... Jay Watkins, the cornerback, and Malik McHale to try to slow down Gary Brown, try to stop him and keep him from having one of his breakout games like we've seen all season long. As Keir in the gun, one side card to the far side as he sends Gary Brown in motion. Reverse to Gary Brown. Gary Brown cutting it upfield, gets past the first stick and gets out at around the 36-yard uh, line. So a pretty good gain there of about uh, 11 on the play. Yeah, that sets up a third and manageable here for California. You need to get the ball in Gary Brown's hands, and if you have to do a receiver sweep like that, that's exactly what you need to do because Gary Brown with the ball in his hands is one of the toughest guys in all Division II football to stop. 
third and five with 11 minutes to go here in the first quarter. Kier in the gun, two side cards, one on either side. Two receivers to the near side, one of the far. As Kier changing the plays up a little bit. As there's going to be a penalty flag here. This may be a false start, Dylan. Yeah, definitely. California appears to be rattled here early. As we said, IEP's been here before, and they've shown that here early on. And it is a false start on California. That's now going to bring them up third and ten. And now Michael Kier's going to have to find something to do here on offense. And we apologize to anyone who was trying to watch the web feed. Hopefully you're on our WCL feed right now. As there's an internet issue, apparently, down in well, where the laptop is that's getting our feed. However, there's another flag here. And this one may be a false start too, Dylan. Yeah, again, fall, false start against California. Again, that's <laughs> tough. If California's wanting to get back in this one after being down 7 nothing, they needed a good first drive. And these penalties, as we said, limit penalties. And they're not able to do that here early on. No, and it's now third and 15 from the 26-yard line. It's Kier in the gun again. Three receivers to the near side, one of the far. As he has one side card on the near side as well. As Kier trying to get them to jump off sides. And however, someone almost jumped off sides but didn't move. As Kier with one second on the play clock, looking to pass. Going deep down the field. He's got a man open. And it is caught for the first down and more at the 30-yard line. What a catch there by Jordan Dandridge. Jordan Dandridge is able to beat his man that was covering him there and get wide open. If, if he was able to stay upright and catch that ball, that could have been six easy ones for California. He worked downfield and got wide open there for Michael Kier. Michael Kier just had to lay that one up for him. And just what a beautiful play call there. And uh, great job by the players for California executing that one. First and 10 from the 32-yard line, 9.45 to go in the first quarter. Kier in the shotgun, two receivers to the near side, one of the far. He's got Nick Grissom as a sidecar to the near side. As he says, Ryan McCauley over. Hand off to Grissom. Grissom almost slipping and falling, spin move, getting the ball now to the 29-yard line. And that's going to be a gain of about four on the play. Nick Grissom has been the guy for California all season long as there he gets his first rushing attempt of the day. And he he's just been a great been great this season. After having a season ending injury last year and not able to play the whole season, uh, he's just done a great job getting back in the flow and uh, being the being the rushing threat for California. Second and seven, nine minutes to go now. Has Kier in the gun, twins to the far side, two sidecars, one on either side. As Kier handing it off now, and he's going to slip and fall, and he's going to get taken down for a four yard loss. And I believe that was Nick Grissom once again. I feel maybe a little bit slippery there, Dylan. Yeah, a little bit slippery, but IUP, their whole defensive line, able to get through, and there was nowhere for him to run. He did slip and fall there on that one, but no room for him to run at all. A great job by IUP's defensive line so far, just penetrating this offensive line of California. Third and 11 and ball at the 33-yard line. Kier in the gun. Trips to the far side. One receiver to the near side. The near side receiver is Jordan Dandridge. As he looks like he's going to change the play now. Sending Nick Grissom as the far side sidecar. As Kier with one second on the play clock. Looking to pass. Under a lot of pressure. Throwing it away. And it is going to be complete. But a loss of two yards on the play. So they tried a little middle screen there, did California, and there was no room for Nick Grissom to get open there. IUP snuffed that one out, and we have not seen that play from California all season long, but they tried it there, and there was no room to run. California, IUP's defense has done a fantastic job here early as California now appears to be going for it on fourth, fourth and long. And on that play, Zach Hooks just got blown apart there by the IUP uh, offensive line there. As Cal going to be fourth and 13. Michael Kier in the shotgun. IEP sending a blitz. Pl plenty of people coming forward there as Kier is going to get taken down and they said he was down. It almost looked like he fumbled it, but he was down at the 40-yard line and got taken down hard and he is not feeling too well right now. 
Yeah, tough fall there. He does appear to be limping off, but IUP has all the momentum here early. And Michael Keir couldn't get it, escape the pressure and a nice diving grab there by the defensive lineman for IUP. But so far, this has been all IUP early. That was Kevin Clark, the linebacker there. And one there's a player injured for IUP, however. And Dylan, we mentioned this before, IUP's got to come out on fire, and that they have. And it's looking so far like IUP has, has all the momentum, like you said. When IUP has the ball, and they, they have a lot of scoring. Yeah, definitely. IUP, the, the number one team in the conference in rushing has been Cali in, in offense has been California, but the number two team was IUP. Both these teams do a great job on the offensive side of the ball. And IUP, a little bit different than California. They love to get it done on the ground. But California through the air. But IUP, as we've seen early, they love to run the ball, especially since their quarterback, which is a Harlan Hill candidate still with that injury, and which is the top player in Division II football, still a candidate for that, even though he got injured two weeks ago. But ever since then, they've been running the ball. And we were watching their game against or following their last regular season game of the season, and they, they didn't pass the ball much the entire game. No, they did not, and I believe we see Mike Petropolo again under center here in the pistol. California's going to have to be ready for that zone read attack. It, they're going to see it all game long, and they did not do a good job stopping in the first drive of the game, and then IUP hit him with a little play action and went deep, so California's got to be ready for that as well. As he's in the pistol here, ball at the 41-yard line, 7-14 on the clock. As he takes a snap, play action, looking to pass. Airing it deep down the field, and it is going to be complete yet again to number 32, Chris Wiesner, and Mike Petropola showing his arm off here as there is a player down for California. Hit California with the same exact play as last time when IEP scored, and they went deep again. A little deep post there, and he was able to get behind Aaron Terry on the defense, and Aaron Terry appears to be the one that's injured. That could be a huge loss for California. He, he has been one of the senior leaders for this defense. Yeah, Aaron Terry kind of getting rolled over on the play. Almost looks like he hit his head as well. Hope he is all right. But this IEP team, I, this is not the IEP team we saw uh, last time during the Cole Bowl. And it just looks like they found this new momentum. And it looks like they want to prove why they think they should have been the number one team uh, and, and why they should have beaten us uh, at California at the uh, Cobol. And just look at that pass again. Beautiful play, and, and it just getting behind Aaron Terry was Wiesner. Yeah, definitely, and it's just not really the IEP's playing so well. It's California not prepared. It doesn't appear to be too prepared in this one. They're coming out a little flat and uh, giving up a couple big plays for IEP. Is there is Aaron Terry appears to be coming off the field a little gingerly there, but California's going to have to buckle up, and they can't go down two touchdowns. That would be – we haven't seen that yet this season, been, being down two touchdowns. In the first quarter for California, they've only given up seven points all season leading into this game. So 104 points for and only seven points against in the first quarter. So California's going to need a stop here. First and 10 from the 17. as Chris Temple in the gun. And he's gonna keep himself up the middle. And Chris Temple bouncing the outside and he's gonna get taken down at the 20 yard line. Ford Progress will be stopped there and finally California stopping that run by Chris Temple. And that's the California defense we've been accustomed to seeing all season long. Doing a great job up front and had nowhere, Chris Temple had nowhere to run on that one as Cameron Tarver and a host of California defenders was able to, were able to stop him there. Second and 11 as Mike Petropola in the pistol here. Chris Temple is his running back. As handing it off up the middle to Chris Temple. Temple getting stopped at the 20, excuse me, 15 yard line. So about a gain of full on the play. It appeared he had a hole on that one, but he just got bottled up in the backfield and was not able to get any progress downfield. You see here, take a look at the replay. He looks like he ran into his own man and wasn't able to hit that hole like he like he wanted to there, but that's setting up a third down along to see if this defense can make a big stop here. 
third and seven, 545 in the first quarter. As Petropola in the gun here. It's third and seven again. And he sends a man in motion. Again, fumble on the play, and he picks it back up and falls on it. And that's a loss of three now, so it's going to be fourth down. And it looks like we may see a, a kicking unit. That could have been a huge turnover there for IUP. That's what you get sometimes in the zone read option, especially with a quarterback that hasn't been running it all season at Mike Petropola. California almost got a big break there. 45-yard field goal for, excuse me, 35-yard field goal. And this is Ryan Stewart again. His kick is up. And it is good. So the score now 10 to nothing in favor of IUP after a big drive there. The time on the clock, 4.48 to go. We'll be back with more football action with the IUP Crimson Hawks and the California Vulcans right here on CUTV and the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the kick is away by Sean Bowling. And he's returnable here. He got a hold the middle and he's getting taken down at the 34 yard line. And a big run there. And Dylan, it looked like uh, when Cal has the ball here, 52.1 in scoring and is the best in all of the NCAA. Yes, definitely. California has done a great job all season, and they have to get back going here. 52 points per game. They're going to have to get back going, look for them to try to get the ball to Gary Brown, maybe try to do a, a wide receiver screen to him or something like that. We've seen that play a lot this season for California, but they're going to need to get their offense going. They haven't faced a 10 nothing defeat all season long and see how they respond here. I want to bat, welcome back our internet viewers here. As the internet seems to be working now, as Michael Keir looking to pass, going it deep down the field, and that is going to be incomplete. And as again, I believe he was looking for Tom Green. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, Tom Green on the play. Yeah, Tom Green. Looked like there was a little window there, but Michael Keir was not able to hit it to take a look at the replay. And Michael Keir had a pocket there and let it set it up for Tom Green, but let him a little bit outside, and that sets up a second down and long. See what they try to do here. It's California to have those two backs in the backfield. Maybe try to try uh, their uh, outside zone here, or maybe even a uh, play action pass again. Second and ten. Kier in the shotgun. That's Kier handing off to Grissom. Grissom trying to cut up the middle of the field and gets about Grissom two yards on the play, maybe a yard. So it's going to bring up Hard third down and it looks like eight, with 4:25 to go in the first quarter. No Game room two, there for Nick Grissom to run eight. on that one. And the IUP has just done a great job slowing down the zone, zone running plays for California all game long so far. And if they're able to continue to do that, then it's going to rely, California's going to have to rely even more on Michael Keir. IUP running a 4-3 defense, looks like, with four guys down on the line, three linebackers. As Michael Keir in the shotgun, two sidecars, one on either side. Only one safety back deep for IUP, and that's what California loves to see. Uh, Cal looking to throw as Keir gets taken down, and that's what Keir happens when you leave one man in the backfield. You can send as many people up as you want, 
And they did that right there, and Fear has just been getting pummeled all day. Yeah, this defensive line for IEP has come to play. Again, just blowing the California offensive line way back into the backfield. And there again was Zach Hooks getting beat there and ended up getting Michael Kier sacked again for the second time today. Zach Hooks again not doing a, uh, his job on, on offense, just getting beaten there. But California now having a punt for the first time today. That was a low punt, and it was almost blocked. And this is going to be fair caught there by Wiesner. So IP will get the ball at the 37-yard line. And Mike Petropol and Chris Temple will lead the team out here. If you look at the I AFCA poll, California number 6, IEP number 11. Yeah, kind of a flip-flop of what the two were ranked the first time they played this season. And if you're California's defense, you're going to have to get one of those big plays that they've done all season long. They're going to have to try to force a turnover here. The offense of California has not gotten going here, and the defense of IUP has played tough early on. Let's see, California's been loading the box here, and if they're able to continue to do that, uh, IUP may be able to do more of those play-action passes that we've seen. Petropola handing off to Temple. Temple getting back to the line of scrimmage, so a gain of none on the play. Second down and 10 for the Crimson Hawks. Yeah, Luke Rapchak and a host of other California defenders were able to get back there and stop that one before it really got going there. But California's going to have to continue to do that. They're putting those guys in the box, loading up the box, and they're going to have to continue to be able to, to stop those run plays for short distances because if if they're giving up runs with loaded boxes, it's going to be a tough, tough game for them. Hand off to the outside there to Wiesner, and he's going to get taken down at the 45-yard line. So third and two now for the Crimson Hawks. And that's a smart play against a loaded box is trying to stretch them on the outside because they don't have those, those safeties and those extra cornerbacks to be back there to stop that and uh, almost sprung that one. Great job by Arnell Farmer and Luke Grabchek running that one down. That was Walter Pegas on that play actually. Trips to the far side there on a stack look as California almost jumping off sides and Petropola hands it off to Temple and Temple is going to bulldoze his way to the 48 yard line and that's good enough for a IUP first down. Yeah, got just enough on that one to pick it up by about a yard. It's Chris Temple and IUP again picking up another third down. And let's see if this California defense, we take a look at the replay here. A nice job there by California's defensive lineman, but they were not able to stop him before he picked up that first down. Let's see what California can do now. Again, we haven't seen California face this kind of adversity all season long. Let's see how they respond. This is a, a big test for them. Petropola in the shotgun. As we have a penalty flag here. It's going to be a false start here against the Crimson Hawks. It looked like an illegal snap there. The center just kind of hesitated and kind of did it like a half snap there. <laughs> and uh, the California's defenders were all over it, and so were the officials. But that's a penalty against IUP. When you can't use that ground and pound rushing attack when you when you get set back like this. So look for them to try to try to get the ball through the air again and see if California's defense, if they if they let up a little bit, Chris Temple can break it and break it for a big run. So. Uh, this is just a great matchup between this rushing attack for IUP and this California rush defense. Aaron Terry still getting attended on the trainer's table, so he's not out there for this defense. It's Petropola handing it off to Temple. Temple finds a hole and gets to the 50-yard line. So pretty good gain there on a running play. Yeah, another big gain there by Chris Temple. I'm not exactly sure what his yards per carry are so far today, but I'm sure it's around five or six. He's just been able to get get going early and uh, just a few times he hasn't been able to to get past that initial surge by the California defense but here second down along see what this defense can do as clock at 35 seconds Petropola handing it off to Pegis and he has a hole and he gets to the 35 yard line on a jet sweep a little jet sweep there again by IUP able to pick up a big gain on the play and California's defense, we have not seen this either all season, just getting just getting blown off the ball and missing tackles, and IUP is just controlling this game right now. First and 10 from the 35. Clock at 10 seconds. We'll see if they take a play here. 
as Petropola in the gun. And it looks like he's going to take a snap, handing it off to Chris Temple as Temple gets taken out at the 31-yard line. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. We're going to step aside here. California down 10 to nothing. IUP leading here with all the momentum on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and CUTV. This is why we love sports. It's in the way they play, free from the pressures and all the money talk. Playing for simply the love of the game, where everyone has a shot at their definition of success on and off the field. This is what we love about sports and what we can still love about college sports. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? And welcome back to Addison Stadium here. I keep controlling the play here. 10 to nothing the score here in the second quarter, just starting now. That's IP at Cal's 31 yard line. There you see Coach Gary Dunn. 10-0 in his first season. Dylan, a pretty good stat for Gary Dunn. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely brought a change of culture here for California. It's been something great to, to see all across campus. It's just changed the whole morale of the whole campus. As Petropola hands it off up the middle to Chris Temple. Temple has a huge hole, and he is going home to the races. That is a touchdown for IUP as Chris Temple finds a hole and exploits it for an IUP touchdown. Actually, it looks like that's, that's Samir Bullock there with the touchdown. A, a great touchdown run there. Had a huge hole. Didn't even get touched. It look, didn't look like it. He's able to get in for another touchdown there for IUP, now setting... California down by by 16. And if he can put this one through, it'll be a 17-point lead. <clears throat> As his kick is up, and it is good. So just like that, with 14.53 on the clock, 17 to nothing in favor of IUP. We'll be back with more football here on CUTV and the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium. As IUP fans came out today, big crowd for them, 17 to nothing the score as kicking it to Gary Brown at the five yard line. Gary Brown. And he's getting taken down at the 26-yard line. And just kind of got ran into in a wall by Turner. as Michael Keir takes over on offense here. Yeah, this is a big drive for the California offense as we take a look back at that touchdown there by Samir Bullock. And I was just about to say right before that, we have not seen him all game. And then there he gets in and he takes his first carry to the house for a touchdown. But if you're California... We said, haven't been in this situation all season long. This is going to be a big drive, and really we're going to see what California has after, after this drive. Look for them to try to methodically work the ball downfield, try to get that running game going here, here on this drive. 
Michael Keir in the pistol, sending a man in motion. As Keir handing it off there. That's to Jalen Bell. Actually, no, Nick Grissom. And it's a gain of five on the play for Nick Grissom. Yeah, nice. Nice little play there for California. They've got in that loaded backfield set that we've seen all season long. And there, Nick Grissom's able to pick up his usual five or six yards per carry, which that's what he averages on the season. So see if California can continue, continue this going in for this whole entire drive. Here again in the pistol. Same look now. As he hands it off again to Grissom. Grissom trying to move forward here, and he gets about three on the carry. So it's going to be third and one for California. As it looks like number five, Taki Turner, has to sit out as a play as he lost his helmet. Yeah, as you said, that loaded backfield two plays in a row. Maybe California saw something that they could exploit there. But now they're going to go back to their normal four wide receiver set. Actually, two tight ends this time. They see what they can do here. It's a big third down. Michael Keir in the shotgun. Nick Grissom, the sidecar to the far side. Sending Gary Brown in motion to the far side. As Keir handing it off to Grissom. Grissom. Getting the ball to the 40-yard line, it looks like, and that's good enough for a Vulcan's first down. Something that you mentioned in the last drive for California as well is that IUP is really having only one safety back, and that time they didn't have a single safety back. They're they're rushing Mike here. They're they're trying to get penetration against this offense. They're that's how that's their approach to trying to stop their big plays is trying to get to them, get to Michael Keir before they happen. IUP back in their base fourth three set it looks like as Keir play action as he makes this completion to Gary Brown and it looks like he should have enough for the first down depends on where you spot him yeah that's to Tom Green there uh, we've seen that play numerous times for California on the play action there and Michael Keir with a beautiful throw had pressure coming in his face but he was able to get that one off to Tom Green it looked like a Looks like a not a very good spot there. It looked like he did pick up the first down, but the officials spot it a little short. They do. They spot him a yard short of the first down as Keir in the pistol again. As he sends a man in motion. Keir handing off to Grissom. As Grissom is going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Third and Grissom one now carrier. for the Vulcans. IUP's defensive line just doing a great job. Not allowing California to get anything going on the ground game. They they moved to that loaded pistol set to try to get some extra blockers in there, try to free up some space for the running game, but IEP wasn't having it there. And another third down and short here. See what California decides to do. Keir, again in the loaded pistol here. As he has got 10 seconds on the play clock, sending Tom Green in motion. As Keir handing it off up the middle to Grissom. Grissom dives his way forward to the 49-yard line, and that's good enough for a California Vulcan's first down. Yeah, California doing a great job of just trying to get the, try to slow down the momentum, get that momentum back in their favor. Just, like said, working their way downfield, and trying different attack on the rushing attack. We've seen them with some extra blockers in there, trying to free up some space, and got a little there to pick up the first down. Look for them to maybe take a shot here. That we we know that they like to take those shots, this would be a great time to take one. As Keir again in the pistol formation. IEP running everyone forward as Keir takes a shot to Gary Brown. He's open, and Gary Brown makes the reception and is tackled at the eight yard line. And IEP brought everyone, and Keir decided to throw it, and he found Gary Brown for a big reception. Right on cue with Michael Keir and Gary Brown. Right after we said they need to take a shot, and right there they did to the receiver that is second in the third in the country in receiving touchdowns, and there almost got him another one. Great job getting behind the defense there. And much better blocking up front on that bull, how, uh, bull rush by the IEP defense, and this gives them a first and goal from the eight-yard line with 11.15 on the clock. As Keir in the shotgun, two sidecars, one on either side. Keir looking to pass. Airing it to Gary Brown, and Gary Brown makes the reception, and it's a touchdown for California. And that's the guy California needs to go to, and that is Gary Brown there, able to get the touchdown. Doesn't need much space at all, as we saw in that last play. Didn't need much time to get going deep. 
and there doesn't need much space at all. That's a that's the goal line option you want there with Gary Brown going up and making a great catch and just adding on to his school record there for touchdowns. One-on-one -on -one with Mikhail Mackle, and Gary Brown has that matchup all day long as William Brazil on the kick the extra point. His kick is up, and this one is good. So the score now, California cuts it to 10 with 11.06 remaining in the first half. IEP up 17 to seven. You're watching and listening to Vulcans football on CUTV and on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. This season, the pride and pageantry of college football. Is that a catch? Oh, yeah! Can all be found in one place. He will score! Touchdown! NCAA.com. From the biggest matchups come breakout performances. Keep it one deep. Those game-changing moments live here. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcast of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium as he fumbles this, the ball there, but he keeps his feet moving and gets taken down at the 23-yard line. That was Jake Silendonio, I believe. And now we're seeing the emotions get going for both teams. They realize the importance of this game. But here we take another look at that touchdown from Michael Keir to Gary Brown. And Gary Brown was able to go up. Beat that coverage that you're talking about and just able to bring that down. We've seen that so many times this season. It's just so tough to stop Gary Brown. If if IEPs want to want to continue to bring all this pressure and leave Gary Brown one on one on the outside, that's what they're going to have to deal with. As Mike Petropola in the shotgun, Chris Temple is his sidecar. Look for this defense now that the <coughs> offense gave them a little bit of momentum. See what they can do here to slowing down IEP. As there's going to be a big hit there on one of the California players, and Temple gets a, only about a yard on the play. That was a huge block there, Dylan. I'm not sure if you saw the number on that one, but it was a big block coming on the near side, and right there, number 18 just trucked Jordan Bowman, and that was JoJo Gauss. Yeah, but a uh, little away from the play, but California's defense did a great job slowing down that run there. Reverse there to Pedges, and he has his speed and a first down. And that's something that, you know, if you're not ready for it, Dylan, you're going to have to quickly adjust your field and then try to chase down the receiver. Yeah, normally they tell you, to, they tell you as a coach to not run that reverse a couple, too many times a game, but IEP can do that. with it. As, as well as they run the ball, California is going to have to key in on that and try to stop that running attack and the, that's their counter play here. They're coming back with the reverse. That's their counter option that they have. As it's a handoff to Temple, and Temple gets the ball to the 35-yard line. That's enough for a IUP first down. IUP has scored on every drive so far today. See if California can stop them or if there will be yet another score. And that's the man that's led them. It's Chris Temple finished that first quarter with 53 yards on the ground. So look for him to continue going here as we go in to the second quarter. 9.45 to go here. Clock running. 10 on the play clock as he hands it off up the middle of the Temple. And Temple gets wrapped up immediately, gets about a yard on the play. Second down and nine. There's the defensive line. And, de and as Malik Atkins, Atkins there coming up late after that one, number 94. But... That's the defensive line we've been accustomed to seeing all season long. Able to shut down that running game in the middle. And now look for this defense to try to get excited here. Try to get a big stop here on this drive. Mike Petropola in the shotgun. Three receivers, two to the near, one to the far. As Petropola looking to pass, it is complete to Wiesner. And that's a gain of six on the play. It's going to be third down and three. Yeah, he's going to have to be able to mix it up like 
like we just saw on that play and be able to complete those short passing games. They can't go deep the entire game, and there they're able to hit a little hitch route there, able to pick up a nice gain, setting up a third down and short. It's uh, another big third down here. Petropola in the gun, same look as he sends Pegis over, and he's going to keep it himself. Petropola's got a hole. Petropola is going to get taken down at the 39-yard line in California territory. And just like that, IEP maintains their momentum with that rush by Petropola. Just makes it so tough when the running back's running so great, like we've seen early on. It just makes it tough that you have to account for that quarterback as well in this IEP offense that makes it so difficult to stop. Even after losing their great quarterback in Lenny Williams, they're still able to keep that attack because their running game is just that great. As Petropola in the pistol. And it's going to be a penalty here. I believe it should be an offside penalty against California. And uh, we'll see here with the official calls. And it's going to be a false start against IUP, actually. So a lucky break there for the Vulcans. Almost looked that, like that hard count worked for IUP. Yeah, it did, but the linemen weren't. Weren't able to stay set there. That's the downfall to running that hard count is sometimes the linemen just kind of lose their train of thought and jump off sides. But that sets them back now with a first and 15. See if California is able to take advantage of that. Eight minutes to go in the first half. IEP up 17 to 7. Petropole in the gun, sending man in motion. And it's a pitch to Pegis. And he's going to get taken down back at the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard short of that. But they like that reverse play, Dylan, and it seems to be working. It's, he's got a very, he's got very good speed. Yeah, definitely, and great job there by Jordan Bowman, able to fight off his block. If he wasn't able <coughs> to fight off that block and make that tackle, that could have been a big run play there for IUP. Great job by the senior leader, Jordan Bowman. Petropola in the shotgun now. Chris Temple, the sidecar, California, coming with a blitz, and it's a reverse, and they fumble the ball. However, P just has it, and. And he's going to get taken down at the 49-yard line. And actually, it was not Pegis. It was number 82 on the play, Zach Kelly. And that pushes them back into their own territory. What a great job there by Luke. Well, it looked like Jawan Turner there caused him miscue on that handoff. And then Luke Rapchak able to make that tackle. It looks like he almost had the edge. And if he had the edge, no one was there to stop him. A great job by Luke Rapchak, able to wrap him up and bring him down for a huge loss on that play. And California was hoping they might have been able to have a guy come and pick up the fumble. However, IUP maintains possession. It's third and 20. We'll see what uh, Kurt Signetti, uh, what kind of trick he pulls out of his uh, mixed bag of tricks this time to try to get him a first down. And that's what you want if you're California's defense. Now they call a timeout, does IUP. You wanted to set them back, and that's exactly, that's the downfall again to running those trick plays, running those reverses is that there goes, those guys aren't used to handing the ball off. And they're, they had the miscue because he was getting hit while he was trying to hand the ball off. That's a big stop there for the California defense. And what they needed to kind of get a little momentum on this team, uh, this defensive side. And here you see the playoff bracket once again, Dylan. They definitely in IUP, which we knew, even with their loss to California and even losing their quarterback, that they were going to be a tough team to stop in this region. And California gets them here in the second round. And then, like you said, Shepard is up big on LIU post here. It was 26 to 7 at the half. So Shepard looks to be running away with that one. And we'll check up on some scores around the NCAA Division II. Shepard up 26 7 at the half. North Alabama, the one seed over there in Super Region 2, up 10 to 7 on the number five seed, UNC Pembroke. North Greenville, the number six seed, up 35 to seven on the number seven seed, Tuskegee. Sioux Falls down seven to three over Harding. And Grand Valley State, seven to three over Texas A&M Commerce. And Ferris State, 24 to 17 over Colorado Mines. As Petropola in the gun, play action. Plenty of time here as he's now rushed, and it is intercepted. And this one is only oh, called incomplete. And it looked like he may have had one foot down. And Luke Smorey is arguing with the official right now and has to get pulled away. 
But, Dylan, take a look at this replay. It was a great catch there and a great job by the defense. Yeah, great job by the defense. And there, it, like you said there, that he was getting frustrated. We don't normally see him getting frustrated like that, do we see from uh, California's California's Luke's Mori. Not used to seeing that. So uh, now California's calling a timeout. Didn't have their personnel guys ready on that one. Yeah, they did not. And you can hear maybe the coaches uh, – Upset that they had to burn a timeout due to personnel. Uh, as it looked like they didn't wanted to have a, a substitution in there. Fourth and 20 now for IUP. As yeah. you see Coach Dunn talking to the, uh, the one of the side judges there. And not sure if we have a, a different angle on that play. And we're going to take a look at it one more time here on this angle. And you see him make the catch there, but the uh, California – sideline is in the way yeah Aaron Brown almost had the interception but Luke Smory again I'm, being on the team with him last year I never saw him get too excited like he did on that one almost caused California to get a penalty to take another look at that one here from this angle here it does appear Aaron Brown almost had his feet in but didn't look like he had possession of that ball and it got ripped out late but like we said Luke Smory showing he wants to win this game and win this game bad showing that emotion there on the sideline Maybe that gets his other guys fired up here. First punt for IEP, and it's botched. And that one is blocked. California can pick it up here, and they will maybe. Well, it's not going to matter because the ball is still out. The ball is still out, and it's a flag now, and this is crazy. It's like hot potato. I'm not exactly sure what was happening. <laughs> Looked like a couple guys had possession of the ball, but... No, I'm interested to see what this penalty is. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. That was some spectacular play there. I mean, I've never seen a, f a fumbles like that. <laughs> I had to take a seat for a minute there. We're going to take a look at this replay and what a replay it will be. Yeah, I'm not sure what they call this flag on, but there they blocked the punt. It looked like Vince Alimenti has a shot to get it there. And then Chad Hagen had the shot as well and was not able to get it. And Luke Samori there, the ball's still down. No one grabbed it yet. No, still no one has it. And then they kind of pitch the ball out. I don't think you're allowed to do that. That might be what they called the penalty on. But either way, California's going to get the ball in some great field position. <laughs> I think you might be right. Those two flags, maybe for the pitch when he was on the ground. Maybe like a forward lateral, they looked like a call on that one. But still, yeah, it should I could still see be that. California's ball. And the referees probably haven't seen this one for before, or, or at least in a very long time, as they have to discuss – uh, what the rules are here. 6.03 on the clock here. It was 4th and 20. A bad snap and a bad uh, grab by the punter caused this uh, all event to happen. And the referee's talking to now Kurt Signetti. And not sure exactly what is happening out there. And I mean, we can only speculate what these calls are. I mean, it was just a crazy turn of events with all these fumbles. But either way, that's a huge momentum shift in California's favor. Take another look at that play. And there is no replay. So it is what the referees say it is on the field. Uh, you can argue it all you want, and you can see it on the big screen even. However, they can't use that as evidence. And I do believe that should be a penalty there. You can't throw the ball forward and cause it to get to, to move out. I think that's you know where they get the ball there and they back them up however many yards that is. Yeah, I do believe that's what's happening here. But again, a huge momentum <coughs> shift and towards, towards the way of California. We said the defense need to make a play. And right there, kind of got kind of got lucky there was a play from IUP. But again, that's the momentum shift California needed. Wouldn't it be something if these were offsetting penalties and they had to repunt it? That would be something as well, but IUP does appear that they're down and ready for that one. For and, uh, California's offense is making its way out on the field. We're going to get the call here. And not exactly sure what he's saying. Um, I believe he said it's something about a forward pass. I'm trying to read his lips on our CUTV box <laughs> here. He's giving a, a dissertation about this call right now as well. 
And I believe it's a spot of the foul, and it's a first and 10 here. And California has the ball, and they'll get the ball at the 11-yard line, it looks like. It does appear they said that it's a spot of the fouls where they would get the ball. But again, that's just that's the momentum California needed there, and uh, that's uh, that could be big. That's one of the key plays in this game. That it is, and a highlight real play it is. It's not first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 12-yard line. 6.03 on the clock. Michael Keir in the shotgun. As Keir hands it off. And he finds a hole. And he plows his way into the end zone. It's a California touchdown. What a run by Jalen Bell. Jalen Bell, the cousin of Levy on Bell, able to get the making a name for himself here for California. And what a hard run there. We've seen it all season long. He's been that ground and pounder for California, able to just show his power and strength and getting into the end zone. And what a crazy turn of events this has been. But California is right back in this one. Brazil to attempt the extra point. As William Brazil on the kick the extra point here. As Brazil's kick is up. And it is good. The score now 17 to 14 in favor of IUP, but California fighting back here with 5.56 to go in the first half. Stay tuned for more action here on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and CU TV. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. And welcome back to Addison Stadium as William Brazil's kick is away. And this one is received by Jake Celandino. And he gets wrapped up immediately there at the 15-yard line, and that's what you need if you're the California special teams. Momentum on their side. Yeah, there is the fullback there for California, able to get that big play there. And like you said, they have all the momentum, and that is Ryan McCauley able to get that play. We take a look back at the touchdown there by Jalen Bell, able to just keep his feet moving and lower his shoulder and pick up a huge touchdown there but like we said the crowd is into it the coaches beside us they're excited man I've, they're really excited over there the crowd's excited the players are excited this is fun to see and Jalen Bell would not be stopped he was weaving in through the defense there and he's able to get through the line as it looks like he's going to keep it himself this is Chris Temple and Chris Temple runs into his own guy but still gets the first down that's a 14 yard here. run there by Chris Temple on a wildcat play. And that's the play the IUP needed, and that's the play you needed if you're Chris Temple to kind of kind of get that momentum 29. back and try to settle back down in this one. And that's a, a great pickup there. We've seen that again from that wildcat formation and uh, able to pick up the first down. And how about that blocking up front to get him those holes? As it's first and 10 now. As Petropola hands it off to Temple. Temple bouncing on the outside and is going to get brought down at the 30 yard line. No gain on the play there. A big stop by the California defense makes it second and 10. Yeah, what a great stop that was by the linebacker, Devontae Suber. It didn't look like he had a good position to make this tackle as we take a look at the replay here. But he hung on and he hung on tight. It wasn't. Suber there. That was Arnell Farmer making number seven there, able to <coughs> keep his hands on his main and bring that one down. Great tackle there by Arnell Farmer. And they gave him a yard on the play. In my opinion, a generous spot as it's 440 now here, 10 on the play clock. Three receivers to the near side, none on the far side. 
as there's going to be a flag on the play. I believe this is going to be a false start, Dylan. And that it is. Yeah, it looked like maybe an illegal shift there from the Crimson Hawks. It didn't look like they had everybody set. Kind of a kind of a different formation there, but again, a penalty setting IUP back. It'll be second and 14 now. Ball at the 25-yard line. 4.32 on the clock now. As Mike Petropola getting the plays from the sideline. Play clock at 15. They're going to run the same play, it looks like, as they put three receivers to the near side, zero to the far side as they send the man in motion. Hand off up the middle to Temple. Temple getting taken down at the 31-yard line. It'll be third down and nine for the Crimson Hawks. Temple had a little bit of running room there, but it closed up quick there as California's linebackers were able to shut that one down. But again, that zone replay we've seen all game long, a uh, little different look there for California. But uh, here's another third down. We've seen these, these are all big third downs now. Is this, uh, this is a rivalry game in the playoffs. It's, it's all coming down to big to plays like this. As Mike Petropola in the gun, third and eight. Three minutes and 30 seconds. Trying to get California to jump off sides. Nobody moving, but there is a penalty flag, and it's a false start. They jumped themselves off sides. <clears throat> As you see the full start call there, that'll back him up again. Third and 13 now. With 3.25 to go on that clock. IUP again hurting themselves. Can't afford that. And this offense is, is not used to picking up these big third down and longs as they, they're, like we said, that, that ground attack. And they don't get normally caught in situations like this. But uh, see what they try to do here against California's defense. Petropola. In that modified pistol look as Petropola handing it off up the middle to Temple. And Temple was going to get wrapped up immediately at the line of scrimmage. And that was a great tackle there by California. Yeah, great job again. Devontae Suber making a nice play there. But again, they, they took the conservative route with a with the zone replay. But California sn sniffed it out. And then we're going to see another punt here, which we've seen. Not the most, most uh, reliable thing, we, <laughs> a predictable play here. See what they decide to do. But uh, again, a crazy turn of events. Probably one of the craziest plays you'll see ever, really, that last time they punted here. See what they, see what they can do here. Got some guys out there to block for the punter. As he gets through and is almost blocked, no flag on the play for roughing the kicker or running into the kicker. Gary Brown has it and runs out of bounds in California territory. However, there's going to be a flag on the play, Dylan, and it appears it may be a penalty against California. Yeah, maybe a late block out of bounds, but a good no call by the by the ref there. When Luke Smorey dove to block that punt, he never got in contact with the punter. The punter kind of fell down after, went between his legs there. Great spot by the official, not not calling that one because of the flaw by the by the IUP player. The referee coming forward to make the call here. And holding, actually it's going to be a block in the back against California. And that'll be from the spot of the foul there. You almost see the block here. And just barely getting, uh, missing that one. But a first and 10 now from the 26 after that block in the back. It didn't look like a block in the back from up here. However, the official was right there on the field and must have saw something we might have not seen. As Michael Keir in the shotgun here, sending a man in motion is Luke Smorey. Keir, play action. Screen pass there, and that one is complete to Gary Brown. Brown, spin move, and gets wrapped up at the 45-yard line. And that's a gain of four on the play for Gary Brown. And there's that screen we were talking about. Getting the ball in Gary Brown's hands is just good things are bound to happen. But even with that penalty, California has good field position now with a minute and 50 seconds to go here and uh, see see what they're able to do here is they do have the ball in the second half, so it'll be big for them to have a long, take out the rest of this time and try to get a, some more points on the board. That's Kier in the shotgun, looking to pass. Plenty of time, 
as this one is complete to Jordan Dandridge, and he spins out to the other 45-yard line in IUP territory, and that's enough for a Vulcan's first down. And if, if he was able to break that tackle, was, was the receiver there for California? Uh, that could have been a touchdown. No one was there, and uh, he almost broke that one. Here in the shotgun, two receivers on either side. One sidecar to the far side. 15 on the play clock, a minute and 10 on the game clock. That's Kier. Hand off up the middle, and he's going to get wrapped up immediately there for a gain of a yard. As we have a timeout here by Coach Gary Dunn and the Vulcans. Yeah, Coach Gary Dunn and the coaches beside us appear to be a little frustrated there with Michael Kier. Changing that play into a run play, a little bit of needed some better clock awareness there. Maybe from Michael Kier, but again, just... The momentum has shifted. It's been a tale of two different quarters here for, for IUP and California. IUP really dominated that first quarter. If you're just now joining us, IUP bursted out to a 17-0 lead at the end of the first first quarter and uh, actually a 10-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. And it's been really California ever since then with one of the craziest plays you'll ever see with a blocked punt that ended up turning up almost into a safety or a touchdown. It was really close there. And then... California coming back on offense using the star receiver and Gary Brown to get them back into this one. And the defense made two straight stops now and California driving down the field to score here before half. At the are first, uh, excuse me, second and nine with a minute and three on the clock. As we'll see what Gary Dunn and the Vulcans will do here on offense. One more time out here for California. So try to limit those plays in the middle of the field. That even in college football, once you get past the first down, the, the clock stops until the change are set. So they can still afford that. Here in the shotgun. Two receivers on either side. As Kier takes the snap, looking to pass. He's got nowhere to go with the ball, and he's just gonna have to throw it away. And there may be a flag for intentional grounding, and there will be. Yep. Michael Keir has intentional grounding right there, and and he went. He was in the pocket the entire time and threw it out of bounds. Yeah, can't do that here. He thought he was out of bounds. I mean, he was out of the pocket, but he was not. And a uh, big penalty hurting California on this drive. That's also a loss of down too. So they're going to discuss it, but it's going to be right there at the 50 yard line is where the where he threw the ball from. As they're going to talk to head coach Gary Dunn about this. as the referee is going to make his call. Intentional grounding against California. As you see here on the replay, nowhere to throw. Great coverage down the field, and IEP breaks through on that defense there, and he just throws it away. Still in the tackle box, and there was nobody there for California. There may end up being a 10-second runoff on the clock as well. See what they end up. Or oh. California burns a timeout. Yeah, definitely. See what they decide to do here. Yeah, a 10-second runoff did go down now down to 46 seconds left so again with that loss of down <coughs> that's uh putting them back here on this third down and right now they show second down so not sure what that is but it's 40 seconds now and counting second down and long as the officials are gonna have to stop play here yeah a little bit of confusion the official coming forward. And I heard somebody say they may have to put time on the clock. As Coach Gary Dunn looking for an explanation here. And we'll see what the official says. It's now third down. I don't think that clock was supposed to start running there after that runoff there. And the, the, the play clock never started either. So, see... Now it's starting, yeah. Both start on the same time there. And it is third down and 15. They didn't have the sticks right either. So 35 seconds now. Keir looking to pass. Plenty of time airing it deep down the field, trying to find Gary Brown. And actually, that is Tom Green, and that's the reception you need right there. What a beautiful throw there by Michael Keir, and even better catch by Tom Green. Put that ball right on the money. As Michael Keir's going to clock it here. And right there, it's going to be second down and 10. No time running off the clock there. And 
You're going to see this play again. Look at this pass by Michael Keir. Plenty of time, good blocking, and then finds and threads the needle just so uh, Tom Green could be the only one to make that reception once he got up for it. Yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful throw there by Michael Keir. Put it in the only place you could put it to even have a shot at the catch, and then Tom Green went up and made a fantastic catch. That's a, that's a huge play there for California. <coughs> Second and 10, 26.5 seconds on the clock. Kier in the shotgun. Two safeties back for IUP now. Kier looking to pass. Again, plenty of time. Finds a man open, and that is Gary Brown. And he is down at the four-yard line, so it's going to be first and goal with 20.5 seconds. Another nice play there by Michael Kier. Michael Kier really coming alive here in the second quarter, finding... Gary Brown in that short little window there, and they appear to be huddling up, maybe in their, their strong power goal line formation. Let's see what they decide to do after they come out of this huddle. Well, the clock isn't going to start. He went out of bounds uh, without being tackled for you know, with the forward progress. So the clock is not going to start until they snap the ball. Michael Keir in the shotgun here. As Keir takes a snap, looking to pass. Throwing it over the middle, and that's a touchdown for Luke Smorey. And California, just like that, takes the lead. California now rolling now here. They get the ball down. As it's Luke Smorey out of the backfield this time, not used to that. And Luke Smorey finds his way open right out of the backfield. And Michael here finds him there. And California takes the lead for the first time today, 20-17. to William Brazil on the kick, the extra point to make it a four-point lead for California. This kick is up, and it is right down the middle. Now California leading big here, 21 to 17, with all the momentum with 18.4 seconds to go in the first half. Stay tuned for the rest of the first half here on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and CUTV. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Come back as you see a squib kick there, and he's gonna get taken down there at the 35 yard line. As that one was Nick Dubowski on the return. As the clock now at 13.2 seconds left, and there's the man, Luke Smorey, with a beautiful touchdown reception. Yeah, Michael Keir, as we said, just come alive. Just came alive here in this ball game, finding Luke Smorey. As we said, that one, that one play earlier in the ball game, he got excited there in the sideline, and there he picks up the touchdown. He's playing with a lot of emotion right now, and so is this whole entire California team. The fans here, California, are also getting excited. This is just a great atmosphere, great playoff atmosphere here. As it is again back and forth, just like the Cole Bowl, and IUP's going to take a knee here. They don't want to risk anything. And that'll be the end of the first half here. IUP's going to go back in the locker room and try to figure some things out on defense, and California's going to try to figure some things out on defense as well. And we'll be back with the second half as we take a quick break here for the halftime. The score 21 to 17 in favor of California. Again, you're watching California Vulcans football on CUTV and on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. This is why we love sports. 
It's in the way they play, free from the pressures and all the money talk. Playing for simply the love of the game, where everyone has a shot at their definition of success on and off the field. This is what we love about sports and what we can still love about college sports. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Enough. Yeah, I'm over it. We shouldn't need commercials to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the California Vulcans lead it 21 to 17 over the IUP Crimson Hawks after a 17 to nothing deficit. California scores 21 unanswered points. And it was a roller coaster of a first half for both of these teams. Again, once again, I'm Anthony Dagasino. Alongside me will be Dylan Godet. Uh, he, I believe he is getting some drink and food. But right now, we're going to look at the halftime stats. IUP, 143 yards rushing. California with only 22. And then for passing, California, 162 yards passing. IUP, 100 yards passing. Total yards of offense, 184 offensive yards for California. 243 for IUP. No turnovers for either team. However, a blocked punt turned into a nice play for California, which they, they scored on. California has five penalties for 32 yards and four penalties for 20 yards for IUP. IUP leads the time of possession 15-29 to California's 14-31. And so far that really hasn't mattered. As again, again California leading 21-17 to here. Uh, but it all stemmed from that punt block that kind of led to some craziness, and then California getting the ball at the 12-yard line, and then the scoring the next play with the Jalen Bell touchdown. So California only 22 yards rushing, something that we don't usually see here, and we're going to see some highlights now with IUP. Mike Petropola taking over for Lenny Williams after he got injured in the game against Mercy here, so he threw a bomb down the field to... Number 32, Chris Wiesner, and that was a big touchdown for them. That was their first touchdown of the game. For California, then Michael Keir trying to throw a quick pass and a good defensive play for IUP. And that was basically the story for a while. IUP had great defense, and then Michael Keir, again, you see him getting rushed out here, and he gets tackled by number 25. Kind of was shaking up in the play. However, he did get back up and was able to keep going. And, you know, Michael Keir doing a great job here. You see him again. Again, pressure in front of him, and he's going to get sacked here. So defense for IUP, really the story to start off the first half. And just you know, IUP's offensive line just did a great job. And there you see... Chris Temple doing what Chris Temple does. Actually, no, that's, I believe that's Samir Bullock as I welcome in Dylan Gooday now. Yeah, coming back over here. Had to stand by on the camera there. But uh, again, like you said, like this, the whole first quarter was all IUP. They really dictated that game. California came out flat, but then California came right back with Michael Keir going deep 
right, right on cue with that one to Gary Brown there. It led him a little bit far. That could have been six points, but that very next play, he went right back to Gary Brown. Take another look at that one. Just a beautiful catch there by Gary Brown. You expect nothing less from him. And then the very next play there, Michael Keir goes to Gary Brown. And Gary Brown goes up and makes a beautiful catch there. Just what we've seen all season from him and what the scouts are seeing on the next level is Gary Brown just had a spectacular season all around. And then there's the uh, craziest play you'll ever see probably right there, the blocked punt. And then Vince Alamini tries to get that ball, gets hit, I'm not able to contain it. Chad Hagen misses the ball, and IUP looks like they might have fell on it. And then no one had control of the ball. Still bobbling, no one has possession. And then there, Chad Hagen gets the ball, and then that's where he pitched it out and uh, was the forward lateral they called in that play, but just one of the craziest plays. <laughs> you agree, Anthony, one of the craziest plays. One we of the craziest plays, plays ever. We may ever see, and I know a couple friends, one of my friends back home, they're watching this game, and they said they showed it to his dad, and they had no idea what the what to make out of that play. It's one of the craziest plays. And then there they get that handoff to Jalen Bell, just just such a hard runner. I'd like to see him getting a lot of carries here as the second half kicks off. And this one is returnable there by Gary Brown. Brown finding a hole, pushes his own guy out and gets table top at the 32-yard line, and by number 82 on the play for. IUP, and that is Zach Kelly. First and 10 Vulcans from the 32. <clears throat> First and 10 for California at the 34 yard line. And Michael Kier takes over now on offense. Yeah, after going 10 for 12 for 162 yards and two touchdowns in that first half, he was sacked <coughs> three times, but we saw those sacks in the first quarter. California's deep offensive line has done a great job stopping them since. Look for Michael Kier to Try to keep going with, with his man there, Gary Brown. First and 10, Michael Keir looking to pass. Goes to Gary Brown, like you said. Gary Brown, stiff arms, but gets wrapped up by the ankles at the 41 yard line, and that's gonna be a second down and one for Vulcans now. Second down and one. Pitch and catch with Michael Keir and uh, Gary Brown there. Take a look at the replay there. Just a, just a hitch route, and he caught the ball, and he was one tackle, one broken tackle away from picking up a huge gain there, but uh, you like to see that there, nine yards there in the first play of the second half. Michael Kier in the pistol. As he's getting a new play from the sideline here. And that's that formation we've seen California able to get their running game going there with that powerhouse backfield. Second and one. Kier handing it off to Grissom. Grissom keeping his feet moving and getting the ball to the 44 yard line. That's good enough for a Vulcans first down. And that's what we've come First to expect Vulcans there from, the from Nick Grissom, just able to keep his keep his uh, feet feet moving even when he's getting tackled and has a couple men on him. He's able to keep his feet turning there. Well, he had eight carries, end up with 16 yards there in the first half because he got bottled up very early. And then late in the second quarter, we saw him able to finally get going there on the ground. First and 10 for the Vulcans from the 44-yard line. Kier in the pistol, setting a man in motion. Nice Kier, play action. Throwing it deep down the field. He's got to get Gary Brown in stride, and that's going to be too far inside for Gary Brown. And it's going to be second down and second 10, down. but not a bad decision by Michael Kier, just wrong placement of the football. Yeah, definitely. Try a little stop and go there. It looked like he did have Tom Green open on the other side of the field, but Gary Brown was not able to. Great coverage there by AP. That's a play we ran in high school there, the old stop and go. Uh, didn't work for California there, but it's okay. They, they're second and 10 with great field position here. Uh, see what they can do. It is a little breezy outside, too. As Michael Kier again in the pistol. Looking to pass. Goes over the middle there, and that one is complete and is wrapped up at the 45 yard line. Green with the reception. Complete catch there to Tom Green. First, First down, California. If IEP continues to just leave that cushion there on the receivers, California's been able to. Get those passes under the, under the coverage there all game. They're just finding their way open. Tom Green's great at that. Tom Green's one of the best at finding his way open, especially in man and even in the zone coverage there. So see if California can continue to control this time possession here and see if they can continue this drive going. As Kier back in the power pistol formation. Play action. As he throws it over, and that one is going to be complete there again to Tom Green. 
And he gets it up for the first down. He was covered there by Jay Watkins. Watkins almost got a hand on it, but Green was able to make that reception. And Michael Keir, another play action play there, got hit while he was throwing that ball and still able to throw a beautiful ball there to pick up another first down and continue this, this drive for California. Followed the IP 34 yard line, first and 10 Vulcans, 12.40 on the clock. Keir in the pistol. As Keir handing it off now to Grissom. Grissom cutting up field and getting taken down to the 31 yard line. And that's about a gain of four on the play for California. So California able to get that ground game going there. Picked up four on that one. Uh, see if they can continue that. The IUP's defense has done a great job so far of containing Nick Grissom. But uh, now that California is able to get the ball through the air, they might have to take some guys out of the box there. Twins to the far side. Keir in the shotgun. That's Keir looking to pass. Screen pass to Gary Brown, and Gary Brown is going to get wrapped up for a gain of three on the play. Brown with the reception. So third down and, again, Stop management for the Vulcans. Yeah, nice tackle there by McHale. It's tough to tackle Gary Brown in space, and he makes a nice tackle there, able to grab onto a jersey, it looked like, and bring him down. Uh, that's what you have to do with Gary Brown, though. Just tough to, tough to contain in a box there in the open field. Third and four for the Vulcans. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far. Shotgun for Michael Keir. As he has one sidecar to the far side. He's got five on the play clock now. As Keir gets it off with one on the play clock, handing it off to Grissom. Grissom getting the ball to the 25 yard line, maybe. Or will they spot him a yard short? Here. It looked like he got the ball to the 45, which is a first down. But they're going to spot him about a yard short, well, Dylan. The yeah, there's no hesitation from California. They're going for this one. Their wind <coughs> is kicking. It's blowing, and it's blowing right towards California's faces here from left to right across the field. So it'll be tough to kick right into the wind. Big fourth down for both teams here. Michael Kier trying to get in the jump off sides. No one moving for IUP. Not very far to go. Michael Kier again in the shotgun. Seven. Now five on the play clock. Keir takes the snap, looking to pass over the middle. And that was complete to Luke Smory. Smory keeps his feet. He gets to the 10-yard line and more as he gets taken down here at the 7-yard line. That's a first and goal for the California Vulcans. And Luke Smory is keeping his great game going there. They put the put that ball in Michael Keir's hand there to pick up that first down, and he found Luke Smory. Luke Smory is able to break a tackle and get the ball inside the 10. Great pickup there by California. That was Ronald Womack Jr. trying to tackle Luke Smory, just kind of spun off him. And just the pistol look now for Michael Keir. Two receivers to the near side, one on the far. Keir handing off to Grissom. Grissom plowing his way forward, and he is going to get taken down at the one-yard line. Grissom Good the effort here. there by the pile and Nick Grissom to keep driving forward. A great job again. Not the biggest guy in the world is Nick Grissom. He's able to keep his feet moving there with the big boys there in the back. So they're pushing him. They're trying to get all the leverage they can and they're able to get down to the one yard line. But a great drive by California. It's elapsed a lot of time here in this in this third quarter. And the power back, John Franklin the third in for the first time today. As Michael Keir is in the pistol look. You got to think maybe they go up for him, but IEP in the goal line formation as they send Gary Brown over. Looking like they're going to go right up the middle. Play action now for Keir. Throwing in the back of the end zone. That is a touchdown, California. What a touchdown reception by Paul Butler. Paul Butler there made a beautiful catch. They tried to get Gary Brown open on that one. Sent him in the backfield. Tried to get the defenders there lost on coverage of Gary Brown, but he was not open. But Paul Butler was, and Michael Keir kind of a tough catch there by Paul Butler. He's able to dive and make a wonderful catch there. Michael Keir throwing off his back foot, too. So not the most accurate throw from Michael Keir, but Paul Butler doing what he can to make that reception as William Brazil on to kick the extra point for California. His kick is up, and it is good. They score now. California leading 28 to 17 with 9.08 to go in the third quarter. You're watching the California Vulcans football game here on CUTV and on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network.
Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. And welcome back to Addison Stadium as this kick goes into the end zone here, but is returnable as California trying to pin him deep and he is going to get taken down at the 14-yard line and a flag thrown late at around the 15. We'll see what this, this is on IUP. That's a big penalty. Yeah, it looks like in the area of holding there, maybe what they call California, just able to blow past all the blockers there for IUP, and they just create a wall for the returner they run through. No room to run at all there. As a call, waving the flag off now, so no harm, no foul for either team. And look at this touchdown again by Michael Kier to Paul Butler. Yeah, as you said, kind of on the run there, making that <coughs> throw to Paul Butler. But Paul Butler able to make a fantastic catch and bring that one in. We've really seen him come on as of late and making some big plays for California, especially in the red zone there. They have so many options. You have, like you said, John Franklin in the back to go to. You have Gary Brown on the goal line fades. And then you have Paul Butler and Ryan McCauley on the inside there to um, make those big, tough catches as they're the bigger body guys there for California. Petropola. And the gun handing it off to Chris Temple. Temple hits a wall and is going to get taken down after a three-yard gain. Getting the ball to around the 18-yard line. The California's defense able to just do a better job as a defensive line of getting through the offensive line of IUP and stopping them in the backfield. There, look at Luke Rabchak coming off a fantastic game in the PSAC championship game where he was able to be the MVP of that game. Look for him and the rest of this California defense to try to try to stop this rushing attack of IUP. Petropola in the gun. Handing it off now to Chris Temple. And Chris Temple is going to get taken down for a two-yard gain. So third down and four, I believe, for the IUP Crimson Hawks. Chris Temple went into halftime with 71 yards on the ground and averaged four yards a carry. And He's not getting that four yards here. The California defense is doing a great job stopping him. If it wasn't for that one big loss that he had of nine yards, he uh he may his his yards per carry would be higher than that. He's just done a great job there in the first half. But California's defense has come back here in the second half and stopping him for short gains. Petropol in the shotgun looking to pass. Plenty of time. He's got a man open down the field possibly. And it is going to be incomplete. Trying to jump the ladder was number 18, Jojo Gauss. And... He's a little shaken up on the play as Gary Brown checking up on him. You know, receivers to receivers. Yeah, nice coverage, though, by he does appear to be pretty pretty shaken up on that one. But nice coverage there by Aaron Brown. He hasn't played all season long. He's come on as of late and made a nice deflection there to prevent that big play there for IEP. And great tight coverage on them both. But And in basketball, Dylan, that would have been a uh, over-the-back foul. As you see there, our CUTV uh, Twitter page, uh, at CUTV underscore PA. And you can follow us. There we post all of our t uh, happenings on, on our Twitter page. You see that uh, lovely lady right there, maybe on Twitter as well, looking at our Twitter page. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's probably what she's doing there. Twitter is so popular nowadays. But you can keep up with all of our content on there as uh, we'll have coverage of now that, now that it's winter sports season, we'll have a winter sports on there as well as this, however long this football season lasts here for California, but uh, just all, lots of great content on there. As it's going to be fourth down for IUP, and uh, once again, they'll be punting the ball here. They had one uh, snafu with the with the punt. And look for Luke Smorey. He was back there on both of them. The last two punts that they have had almost blocked the last one as well. 
And this time they're not going to send anyone going. And it's going to be returnable by Gary Brown. Gary Brown has a hole now, and he's trying to go to the outside. And he gets pushed out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So not, not a bad return there by Gary Brown. Has, haven't seen him really return very far. As, oh, the scoreboard looks like it's trying to turn on. Hit the scoreboard there. But again, here's another look at the re Super Region 1 playoff bracket. And uh, Shepard is running away with that game against number two LIU Post. I don't expect that. Shepard is that team that's just always been around in this region. Just a very tough opponent. Because now it's, well, actually, LIU Post is coming back in that one. Uh, tightened it up a little bit. 40 to 21. Still a pretty decisive lead there for Shepard. But again, uh, four minutes on the clock, though. Four minutes, yeah, four minutes on the clock there. Does appear Shepard has that one. But, uh, that should be a tough opponent for whichever team makes it out of this one. As Michael Keir in a shotgun looking to pass. Screen pass to Tom Green. He's going to get wrapped up immediately there by number two, Jay Watkins, for IUP. A loss of a yard on the play. Yeah, Jay Watkins made a couple big hits in that last game against California. Kind of kind of was able to slow down Gary Brown for the most part until the very end of that ball game. But uh, the, a great tackle there, able to bring down Bring him down there. Michael Keir in the gun. Trying to get him to jump off sides again. IEP not moving. One side card on the near side. Two receivers on either side of the field. Smory and Gary Brown are the near side receivers. Keir looking to pass. As he's going to spin out and get tackled at the 50-yard line by number 94, Jordan Divin, on the defensive lineman. And that's a big loss there for Michael Keir. Tried to get out of that one, but he couldn't there. Yeah, both of the Odegbo was there as well. But like we said, just both guys causing pressure there. Again, that's Zach Hooks there at that left tackle position, causing more problems for Michael Keir. Now it's a third down and long. See what California decides to do here. We've seen them pick this up a couple times deep through the air. See if Gary Brown is able to get open here on this one. One safety back for IUP. Third and 16. Michael Keir in a shotgun. Three receivers to the far side, one of the near. Looking to pass. Under pressure. Throwing it deep down the field to Gary Brown. And he is harassed on the play, but no penalties coming. And I believe the officials are going to say that it was not catchable. The tough. Maybe it's because it was uncatchable because he kind of held him back on that one. But uh, tough, tough call there for the officials. And see if we take a look at the replay. Just. Kind of had him by the arm, and definitely looked like a questionable no call there. But nonetheless, it is is a stop there for IUP. Big stop for IUP. You needed that one, especially with the field position California had, and they're able to stop them there. As this punt is away, a nice spiraling punt, a fair catch here at the 14-yard line. So back to where they started their drive the first time after the uh, the kickoff. Yeah, Michael Keir, though, what a beautiful skyrocket punt there. The quarterback just punting. You won't see that. If you haven't seen this California team play, the quarterback there is a punter as well and just done a great job recently. There you see our California University Television Facebook page. Give us a like, and uh, you see all the things. We usually post the same things on Twitter as well as Facebook. One of my favorite social media sites there is Facebook, Dylan. Yeah, Anthony, uh, you're all over Facebook, but I am as well just – it's a great tool to keep in touch with family, especially since us college kids are away. A uh, great tool to stay in touch. As handoff to Temple, and Temple trying to bounce to the outside and is going to get run into there at the 14-yard line, so a gain of zero on the play, and Temple is hurting on the play, grabbing his knee. That could be a huge loss there for IUP. You do not want to see that, especially a talented guy like Temple. But Malik Atkins having himself a game there on the interior for the defensive line, doing a great job, really come onto the scene this season. Didn't hear much of him last year, but he's just done a great job here in this ballgame. And he has, and I believe it. what happened there was that the injury you'll see here, Temple tries to run outside, and the defensive lineman has him, and then right there he kind of runs into his own lineman, and he rolls over onto his knee. I hope he's all right. Second down and nine, or second down and ten for the IP Crimson Hawks. He is sitting up, though, so it looks like they may try to get him up and help him off the field, as they do here. And that's not the biggest loss. You hate to see an injury, though, but 
IUP has a couple a couple of great running backs, especially Samir Bullock. We saw him really come onto the scene last game against California, the younger guy there. But you really hope Chris Temple is okay. Such a talented guy, just able to do a great job running there, picking up over 70 yards in the first half of this ball game. Hate to see that. You hope he is okay. And something to note on California's sideline, it looks like number 50, James Bradley, has like flames on his on his head or something. I'm not not exactly sure. It's actually, we just got the word before today's game that they switched up numbers. 50 is actually Craig McCorkle there for California. Uh, he, he moved, for some reason, they didn't have the red jersey 451 for Craig there. But, uh, yeah, you, he does have a interesting design in his head there. And a play action here for Petropola under a lot of pressure. And this is going to be incomplete. California is trying to dive to make a catch there. It looked like that was Aaron Terry. And that was trying to make the interception. Glad he's back from being injured there in the first quarter. But Petropola there, play action. Lardini almost got to him there, do diving effort, but Petropola didn't have enough on that one and uh, wasn't really comfortable by anyone on that one. So far, both defenses have stepped up yet again. Third and 10 from the 14. Five minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Shotgun for Petropola. Bullock there as the running back, looking to pass. As he got plenty of time, and this is going to be way overthrown there. And a fly, late flag there. This is going to go against IUP, the number 65 on the play. Tony Morgante kind of shoved uh, one of the California players in the face. Yeah, that was Luke Rabcheck there. Maybe a little bit of an <laughs> acting job there by Luke Rabcheck. Not really sure he hit him hard enough to throw him back like that, but uh, he did draw the penalty there. Did have his hands up around the face of Luke Rapcheck. It did look like a penalty before he even fell down, and then after he he fell down there, they had to call it. It should be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty if uh, I'm remembering correctly. That was the head official there calling that that penalty. And do you know if this is coming? If it was after the play, is it going to bring, bring back them up for a long punt, or are they going to attack it on after the kick? I'm not entirely sure. I'd say they want to take this one here on the fourth down. Let's see what they do call on the play. So referee calls after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on IUP. And should be a 50. He's ejected, Dylan. He has been tossed from the contest. That is, that is something I was not expecting. Wow, maybe they've said something to him earlier on in the game there. It's the bottom of your screen. They're locked up, and then he has the hands to the face of Luke Rapcheck, and maybe that was just something that's been going on the entire game. They had to let him know numerous times, but uh, wow, what a, what a big call there by the officials. And that's going to back him up deep, and that, you're losing one of your, your linemen there to protect uh, Petropola. Yeah, there definitely. You see there. Tony Morgante getting escorted off the field. And that's just something you, you just can't do. Yeah, the redshirt senior there, 6'3", 280, a big loss for them. He is, like you said, one of the starting linemen. You, <coughs> you, don't, you can't afford that if you're IUP. And they're deep into their own end zone here. As California not sending really anybody out there. And this is to Gary Brown, a nice punt there. As Gary Brown takes it out to the 35-yard line and dancing around and gets taken out to the 40-yard line. And a beautiful punt. However, there's an IUV player down right now. Not doing so well as the referees are going to stop play here for him. But a beautiful punt there. And you got to think the wind helped them get the ball down that, that far. Yeah, definitely. The winds have been blowing from left to right. Sent Gary Brown running backwards there. Nice over-the-shoulder catch. Risky catch there, but he was able to bring it down. And the IEP has done a great job of tackling him in space. Not too many times today we've seen him breaking tackles like we usually see and making guys miss. They've done a great job containing him, but there's just too many guys in this California team you have to contain where they're they're doing a great job with with Gary Brown, but there's just so many other options as well. So uh, you hope the player there for IEP is okay. He's running over 
on the sideline. But uh, another big drive for California here. If they're able to take some more time off the clock and maybe get some more points on the board, it could be huge. He wants to keep playing. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, maybe just got a little uh, little stinger there or something there. But uh, glad to see he's okay. Yeah, referee's making sure he... Hey man, you can't play yet. You gotta, you gotta sit out one play. Uh, hopefully, he, you know he, he's definitely all right there. Wants to get back in the action. As California takes over here at the 40-yard line, Michael Keir in the shotgun, handing it off there to Nick Grissom. Grissom finds a hole and he plows his way over to the 48-yard line and a big run there by Nick Grissom. Yeah, and again, that's, we really did not see that in the whole first quarter. If you were watching here in the first quarter and just now tuning back in, you were not used to California just being able to get open on those outside zone runs. That's a staple for this offense, and it was not open there in the first quarter. But IEP just keep – California, excuse me, keep grounding and uh, get able to get that running game going. Kier handing it off again to Grissom, and he's going to get to the 50-yard line. That's good enough for a – should be good enough for a Vulcan's first down unless they mark him short. Again, from here, it looked like he got to the 50-yard line. They're going to mark him short, Dylan. Yeah, it looks to be just a tad short and right on the marker. It does look like they say the 50-yard line is the yard to get, and they're just short. So a sh very close third down here. See what California can do. Michael Keir going to be uh, in the shotgun with Nick Grissom, the sidecar to the far side. As he sends McCauley over. Kier handing it off to Grissom. Grissom getting past the 50-yard line to the 49, and that's good enough for a California first down. Yeah, again, Nick Grissom, that's the guy you want in that situation there. was able to keep his feet moving and continue his, uh, his great day here on the ground. Shepard beat LIU Post 40-21. to 21. They will play the winner of this contest here in California. Shepard again, once again, making it into the regional final game. Kier, play action. Going down the field, and that one is complete there to Tom Green, I believe. Actually, Gary Brown on the play on the far side. Again, looks like he may be just about a yard short. Yeah, we've seen that play from California a lot today, where Michael Kier's rolling out, and lost, not all season there. It's usually Tom Green there, but now they had Gary Brown over there, and uh, again, it's just tough to cover the receivers on that play. Second down and a few inches for California. That's Michael Keir going to be in the shotgun once again. Two receivers to the near side, one of the far. Keir handing it off to Grissom. Grissom diving forward there, getting to the 39-yard line, and that's enough for another Vulcan's first down. And that keeps that clock moving here for California, doing a great job with their time management. One of the keys to victory we're talking about with IUP, but if California is able to dictate that, it's going to make that the ground and pound game from IUP tough to tough to get them back into the game if California is able to dictate time of possession. First and 10, 2.40 on the clock. Ball at the 38-yard line. Michael Keir in the pistol. Sending a man in motion is Gary Brown on the near side. He answered off to Grissom. Again, Grissom getting about a yard on that one. So it'll be second down and nine coming up. Yeah, again, just keeping that same ground game there. The in little inside zone there to Nick Grissom. Not much room to go to there. IUP's defensive line starting to step up here and uh, doing a better job of containing Nick Grissom. But uh, now with this second down and long, see what California decides to do. Do they take a shot or do they continue this kind of methodically, methodic pace of working the ball downfield? Here in the shotgun, sidecars on either side, three receivers, two to the near, one to the far. As Kier takes the snap, looking to pass. Going down the field, that was incomplete there as he was trying to get Luke Smorey just in and out of his hands as he tried to jump for that one. Yeah, almost had a spectacular catch again there, jumping up for that one. And you said, trying to decide what California's going to do. And there they try to get, pick up a, a big play there. And uh, just right through his hands was Maury there. But again, third down and long here. See if IUP is able to make another big stop. Again, not really good kicking position for California for a field goal as the wind is again in their face. It's definitely four down territory. See what they decide to do. Pick up a little bit or try to go for the whole first down here. Kier looking to pass. 
and he is complete to McCauley. And Ryan McCauley gets taken out of bounds here at the 25-yard line. And it was a short pass that turned into a big gain and a first down for California. No one accounted for McCauley out of the backfield there. And Michael Keir found him wide open there in the flat. And then he had plenty of room to pick up the first down. Great execution there by California. Also great blocking on the far side, too, by the wide receiver. <clears throat> That's Keir in the shotgun again. First and 10 from the 24, a minute and 18 on the clock. California trying to keep that time possession in their favor. Letting this clock run as much as they can. Five on the play clock now for Michael Keir. As with one second, Keir gets it off. Looking to pass. Complete there to Gary Brown. And Gary Brown gets the ball to the 18-yard line. Yeah, decent pickup yet again. One of those quick outs there by California. I know uh, we ran those all the time in practice there. That was one of the top routes we threw in practice. Just working on that timing. It's such a timing route there. You want to get that quarterback able to flip his hips and find his receiver there before he gets out of bounds because there is a boundary there that you have to thread the needle with. We have an official timeout here on the IUP sideline and not sure. A referee coming forward here. Maybe the play clock didn't start there. And I believe it's a play clock issue. Trying to find out what the referee's saying. No penalties on the play, though. Still second down and four. The clock is showing 59.4 seconds. Um, maybe the clock is wrong, and it is. Uh, they actually put it at 48 seconds now. And it starts winding down now at 45. It's Michael Keir back in the shotgun. Handing it off now to Grissom. And Grissom has a hold of the outside and cuts it back and gets to the five yard line. And that's a first down for California. Another beautiful run by Nick Grissom. Yeah, that's his biggest pickup on the ground of the day. That's a stretch outside zone there and he's able to <coughs> break a tackle and once he gets to the outside he, he has plenty of running room he's able to get all the way down to the five yard just before the five yard line and looks like that'll do it here in the third quarter for california and that will be the end of the third quarter california doing a great job on clock management they lead at 28 to 17 and will pick up at the five yard line and it'll be a first and goal when we come back here on the vulcan sports radio network and cu tv This is why we love sports. It's in the way they play, free from the pressures and all the money talk. Playing for simply the love of the game, where everyone has a shot at their definition of success on and off the field. This is what we love about sports and what we can still love about college sports. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? And welcome back to Adamson Stadium again. Uh, California leading 28 to 17. Thank you all to uh, those listening on both WCAL and CUTV. Again, a simulcast venture here. First time in a long time we're doing a simulcast event with the truck. Uh, we used to we usually do a one camera simulcast. Uh, however, we have the truck and we have the capabilities of doing this. So, yeah, with during Thanksgiving break and stuff, uh, the dorms are not open, so it's tough for kids to get here. But uh, thank you to the people that are helping out with this. Uh, is a uh, Great show here. We did have to do the simulcast, but uh, great to see everybody coming out and helping on a Thanksgiving weekend. Michael Keir under center in the I formation, something we haven't seen in a very long time. Handoff to McCauley, and McCauley 
gets into the end zone for a California touchdown. From the I formation, and the fullback gets the touchdown. And that's Mount McCauley there. Ryan McCauley, the coaches beside us are excited about that one. You hear Coach uh, Salisbury beside of us. He is really excited about that one. Love the, love the big guy there, the fullback, able to get in the end zone there. You did see him reach it across there, and that extends California's lead now. 34-17 the lead here. As William Brazil on to kick the extra point. The hold is good. The snap is good. The kick is off. The a little lift there, and it is good. The score now 35 to 17 in favor of California with 14 minutes and 54 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. California leads it big here over IEP on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and CU TV. Enough. Yeah, I'm over it. We shouldn't need commercials to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium here, the site of the second round of the D2. <laughs> And the Super Region 1, as California leads at 35-17. As William Brazil kicks this one off and is returnable here. As he gets taken down at the 30, uh, 25 yard line. Anderson that was number nine, Malik Anderson on the play. A quick Division 1 score update for everyone. Uh, Michigan is 17, Ohio State 14. 25. As you see a beautiful run by Ryan McCauley. And Kentucky is beating number 11, Louisville, 38 to 31. A big score there. And all you Penn State fans, if you're out there, Ohio State needs to beat Michigan in order for Penn State to be in the Big Ten Championship game. And they need to win that game today as well, but uh, that Michigan-Ohio State game looks to be a great one, as well as the one here. As this is going to be complete there, it almost looks like he dropped it, as complete to Miles Williamson. Draws with the reception. As uh, second down and one for the Crimson Tide. Crimson, Crimson Hawks. I'm thinking about Alabama already. <laughs> I don't even know. As Samir Bullock gets the ball to the 40-yard line. And a first down there. I wouldn't have even caught that one either. It's a good thing you caught that. You may have been saying that the whole game. No, I don't. I usually don't say Crimson Hawks at all. I usually say IEP. Oh, well. They, if they want to be Alabama, they can, they can try to be Alabama, but not looking like it today so far. 35-17 to score here. As IEP really trying to mount a comeback here with 14 minutes on the clock. Petropola. Play action. As he's under some pressure there as it, the ball is tipped. It is incomplete there. What a job defensively by number 53, Jawan Turner. Yeah, Jawan Turner, a great job there. Look like their guys were open there for the Crimson Hawks. Not the Crimson Tide there, and uh, he's <laughs> able to disrupt the quarterback there. Great job hitting his arm when he's letting go of the ball. And just too much on it for uh, Petropola, and a good job he did too much on it. Or else that might have been intercepted by California on the, from this ball-hawking defense. As Petropola sending Bullock in motion. And uh, play action. He's going to keep it himself. And he has plenty of room here. Petropola sidesteps a man here, and he has some room to run. He gets taken out at the 15 yard line. Mike Petropola, what a run up the far side of the field. And that's a play that IUP needed there. He's able to go all the way downfield and pick up a huge gain on that play. Uh, great job by him, able to work his way open on that one. And something California must have been uh, sleeping on, wasn't remembering that Petropola could do that. 
And now it's a first and 10 from the 15 yard line. 13 20 on the clock. IEP trying to mount a comeback. Play action. There's a flag on the play, and this is going to be incomplete here. We'll see who this is on. Possibly an offside there. They threw that right after. Well, actually, it may have been illegal formation there against IUP. There's two flags, one on either side of the field on the sidelines. As referee's discussing it, and he makes the call. And it's going to be an illegal shift on IUP. That'll back him up five yards. Yeah, big penalty there against IUP. They can't afford that here. Now they're in the red zone. You, you can't give up yards to this California defense. First and 15. As he sends a man in motion on the jet sweep. And he has got plenty of room to run and gets taken down at the five-yard line. Nobody there for California as I believe that was number 24, Mason Tortoise. 34, excuse me, as Walter Pegis on the play. A great job there by Aaron Terry and Arnell Farmer to run down that one, or that could have been six points there. Great play design there by IUP. First and goal from the five. It seems second and goal from second and second down, but it, it's going to be a first and goal here as he gets the ball to the one yard line. So first and goal from the one after this good run here up the middle by Samir Bullock. He kind of ran into his own player there too. It might have stopped him from getting in the end zone. Yeah, very close to picking up that touchdown there. Flag on the play here. This one is a false start against IUP. Pushing him back even farther now after that good run. And IUP, 215 yards rushing today. And see how many penalties they have had. I believe it's going to be seven penalties for 37 yards after they add this one in the live stats. Something California is very used to. Yeah, definitely they are. But California done a great job in terms of penalties today. Uh, only five on the day. So a great job by California limiting their own penalties. Petropola in the shotgun. Bullock is a sidecar as he sends a man in motion. As he's going to keep it himself. And he's going to keep his feet moving. But finally getting taken down at the 15-yard line. And they're going to actually mark him for forward progress at the 13. But still a great play by California defense, Dylan. Yeah, able to get him in the backfield there. Jordan Bowman not able to complete the tackle. Tried twice there, and uh, he was able to avoid it. Uh, interesting spot they had on that one. It looks like he has forward momentum. He got it back going again and lost some yards there, but a uh, great job nonetheless by California's defense. Second and goal, Petropola passing, and he's going to get brought down for a sack on the play, a loss of about three, and it was number four. Five on the play, Brendan Blair, the linebacker. Yeah, Brendan Blair able to run him down from his backside. Didn't see him there. Tried to find his guy open and kind of pump faked it, but uh, did not have enough time as Brendan Blair was right there and able to pick up the sack. Third down and 17. And it's actually third and goal from the 17. As there's three receivers to the near side, zero to the far. Petropole in the pistol. As we have a timeout call by California. So, so calling their first time out with 10:44. Looks like Gary Gunn and wants to talk to the line judge about something. Yeah, but just what a great game this has been. And looking at the game notes for this game, and this is the first time that they have actually put California and IUP have played against each other in the playoffs. So uh, that's big for this rivalry matchup. It's the first time they've played against this. The 17th appearance for IUP in the playoffs, the third since 2012, so they've been making this home for them in their postseason play. And then California's first time making the playoffs since 2011. So uh, they take a look at our YouTube page, CUTV Sports 1 there on YouTube. Uh, check out all the replays of all of our games, all of our content's on there, the stuff we're doing this week. 
Including and, this game. Yeah, It'll be up there. Including this game and all of our when we did the high school sports shows and all that. Uh, all that's on YouTube. It's a great thing to be able to put all your content there in a place to store it all there in the cloud, as they say, there through YouTube. As it's third and goal from the 17 with 10.44 on the clock. As Petropola in the gun, looking to pass. As he throws this one in the end zone, it is complete for a touchdown. No, incomplete. Oh, he had it going down, but it falls out. And you can see he wants to have that one back as that was JoJo Gauss. Oh, and you got to feel for him. Yeah, he was not able to just complete that catch. It looks like he may have had it and just bobbled it around and squirted it out there at the end. It looked like it was in between his, his forearm and his side there. And as he started falling, it kind of fell out of his arm. And it's going to be a field goal here. And the wind looks like it's dying down a little bit there on this side of the field. Yeah, definitely. As if they're able to get this, though, they can get within 15, which is still a two-possession game, just like if, if, if they would have scored the touchdown. Ryan Stewart's kick is blocked. It is blocked, and California once again does a, something on special teams. Yeah, like they say, you got to have all three aspects of the game, and California does. They're a big, big play there for California. Uh, blocking that kick. Not sure who it was, but I've seen they've been jumping up and been close all game long, and there they finally get it, and that's a huge play. That's a play that might just seal it there. Look like they're in the middle. Jawan Turner, the senior leader, able to get that one there. He's celebrating there. It's like he hit him on his face mask is what he's saying. Yeah, definitely. Just That's great to see for California there. That may be the play they need to seal this one up. Still a lot of time. 10.34 on the clock. California with, with it on offense. You saw the band there in the shot. Great to have them here at this game. Uh, the football team loves them. We love to have them on camera. Has Michael Keir in a pistol here. Sending a man in motion. He's got three on the play clock, and he hands it off to Nick Grissom. And there's a flag on the play, and it should be holding on California, I believe. He takes away another great run there by Jalen Bell now at the backfield for California. He's a great runner and really the future of this program there at the, in the backfield. And it is holding. Against California, that's a 10-yard penalty. This will be first and 20. As you see that block yet again. Just a great block and great job by California to get through the line and block that kick. That's what the defense has been doing all season long, though, making big plays. To, uh, goes right along with special teams there, defensive special teams, and they've just done a great job all aspects of the game. And California... 35 unanswered points. Because IEP led this game 17 to nothing. And I, California has come back with a vengeance, something they haven't had to do all season. Keir, under a lot of pressure, throwing it to complete to Gary Brown. And he completes that to the 24 yard line. A good gain there. Yeah, nice throw, but there by Michael Keir, able to. It looks like he had Paul Butler for a second, but the window closed up, and he had an even smaller window there that Gary Brown, he's able to get it right before he steps out of bounds. Beautiful play there. Two feet in bounds, too. Only needs one in college. <coughs> as a pistol look here from Michael Keir, trying to wind down this clock and eat up as much as they can. Keir, handing it off to Grissom. Actually, that is Jalen Bell, and he gets three yards, maybe four on the carry. Yeah, just such a tough runner. It's a, he's fun to watch there because you never know. He might break it because he is just so strong and able to shrug off defenders. And there he's able to make a couple moves and pick up a, a decent game where he looked like he didn't have much room to run. 9.20 on the clock. Uh, third down and two. As Michael Keir going to be in the shotgun here again, letting that clock eat down. IEP has all of their timeouts. Update on the Michigan Ohio State game. Michigan had a uh, was able to get the ball back off of an Ohio State missed field goal as Michael Keir under pressure throwing it complete and a flag coming in late. However, Gary Brown made the reception past the first down marker 
I'm not sure what this could be. Yeah, it looks like maybe a, he pushed off there. Gary Brown pushed off to make that catch. It's been close. <coughs> We've seen it all season. It's been close there, but uh, that's what they looks appears to be calling on this one. Uh, Gary Brown is very un, uh, confused about this call, and we'll take a look at it after the referee makes his decision. Uh, Gary Brown still trying to argue his call. Coach Dunn telling him to get back to the huddle. Don't need an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Pass interference on the offense, and now Gary Dunn's going to give it to the officials here. <coughs> I and see on the replay here. See if he does just right out of the shot, but he was open there. Uh, tough to tell. Uh, that does set California back, though, for a third down and very long. Clock still running, though, 8.50 on the clock now. That's Michael Keir in the shotgun. Doubles look for California, two receivers on either side. Using a little clock here is Michael Keir telling the lineman just hold up a second, try to let this play clock run down. Five on the play clock. Takes the snap. Play action. Going to Gary Brown. Gary Brown gets wrapped up at the 20-yard line, and this is going to be a punt now for California off that pass interference penalty on Gary Brown. Yeah, tried to make something happen there. You want to get the ball into Gary Brown's hands there. That's what they decided off the screen, but they've done a great job there as IUP of containing Gary Brown on those screen plays and everybody from California on the screen plays. As Luke Smorey goes back to the punt this one for California. Kind of a mix up there. We've seen Keir all game long, but uh, I'm going to Smorey here. As the punt is away, it is a bad punt here, and this one's going to go in favor of IUP to the 36-yard line. Not something you'd want to do if you're California. Again, the wind started to pick up there, but not a good punt by Luke Smorey. It definitely not, and that's that's a break IUP needed maybe to get back in this one now. Time's not on their side, but they have great field position here. As you see there, the Cal Vulcans Athletics website, all the information on all of the Cal sports and happenings around here in the athletics department. Go to calvulcans.com. That's also where some of you are watching this game right now as well. First and 10 on the 36-yard line for IUP. As the referee coming back now. As he signals to start the play clock. Trips to the near side for IUP. As Petropola looking to pass. Going deep down the field. He's got a man open. And it is incomplete in and out of the hands of Chris Wiesner, who had the first touchdown catch for IUP. Yeah, a couple big plays there as Wiesner has caught those balls. And there, Petropola had him open there on that play. Find his way open just at the end there, but great coverage there by Aaron Terry. Uh, they took their shot there. See what they decided to do here. 7.41 now on the clock. Second and 10 for IUP. As they're getting some plays in from the sideline. Again, trips to the near side. Pistol look. As Petropola hands it off to Bullock. And he gets no gain on the play right back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down and 10 for the Crimson Hawks. Yeah, there's Malik Watson there running off the field. Done a great job for the interior of this California team. <laughs> uh, defensive line, excuse me. It just uh, did a great job of stopping IUP here in the second half. Trips to the near side again. Same look as pressure coming as Bullock. Takes it, and it's going to be a fourth down now as he gets a two-yard gain. Maybe three, so third down and actually fourth down and eight now for the Crimson Hawks as the clock is winding down now, 6.55. Got to go for it here if you're IUP. Trips to the near side, one receiver to the far. Samir Bullock, the sidecar to the near side. Pressure coming as he is under a lot of pressure, throwing this one away, and it is complete there for IUP. Missed coverage there on the, the receiver. He thought the ball was going farther than it did, 
And he left the man wide open. That was number 18, JoJo Gauss. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> kind of almost looked like he kind of let up on that one. Just kind of came off in coverage was Aaron Brown. And that's one of those floaters there for the Crimson Hawks. That they got, they got kind of lucky on that one. Yeah, a great pressure by the linemen and linebackers as they pass here into the end zone fade route. And that one is complete for a touchdown. And that one looked like it was Chris Wiesner on the play. They're making the one-handed grab. Yeah, beautiful catch there. Kind of that back shoulder throw that they talk about with quarterbacks throwing. He's able to bring that ball in one-handed. Beautiful catch there. And IEP's back in this one. As they'll be kicking the extra point here. Score 35-23 now. 6.08 to go in the contest. As... Ryan Stewart on the kick, the extra point. His kick is up and blocked again. Another blocked kick for this California team. They haven't blocked any field goals or extra points, and they do it again here. The score now 35-23 to in favor of California with 6.08 to go here in the, in the game. Stay tuned for more football action here on WCAO and CUTV. Enough. Yeah, I'm over it. We shouldn't need commercials to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Welcome back here to Adamson Stadium as California leads it 35 to 23 over the IEP Crimson Hawks, and you got to think, Dylan, this is going to be an onside kick. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they're in that type of situation. California has our ham team out on the field ready for that one. And we'll see if their ham team can make good on this kickoff here. It'd be a big thing if IEP could get this offense, uh, this onside kick. The kick is away. There's a flag. IUP recovers it, but I believe this one is going to be coming back as they were off sides. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure you're allowed to be on your hands, and I'm pretty sure that's a rule. I'm not entirely sure. Don't take my word on that one, but I'm pretty sure you're not allowed <coughs> to be on your hands and knees there on a kickoff. There's another flag. This one's coming on number 12, I believe. Steve Frank, we just chucked the ball across the field after finding out that his uh, return won't be happening as that should be a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or delay of game penalty. As the referees are gonna have to discuss this one. And you just can see the frustration now on some of these IUP players, Dylan. Yeah, definitely, especially after a penalty like that. You thought you had the ball and that's just such a, such a tough feeling there when you thought you had that that momentum on your side and just lose it like that. And it would be really bad if they wave off this penalty down there, but the other one for unsportsmanlike conduct will still stand. As the referee's going to make his decision here and give us the call. But I don't think they can do that because IEP did recover it. I don't think they would They'll get rid of that one and see what they call here. Offsides on IUP. And then after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on IUP number 12, Steve Franco. And that'll back them up about 20 yards, I believe, on this kick. And he was offsides there. That actually it was the guy who received the ball that was offsides. Yeah, definitely great spot there by the officials. But this is going to be tough because they, if they don't recover this ball, California's going to have the ball in fantastic field position. They may, they may have no choice but to kick it off. I mean... 
if, if they don't recover the ball, like you said, in California, if they don't get anywhere, just a nice little field goal from William Brazil, again, puts three points on the board. As they're going to take a timeout here, I believe. You uh, might nope. see like a squib kick or something here. I believe the ball is going to get kicked at the 15-yard line, Dylan. Yeah, definitely tough, tough, tough situation here for IUP. As they're going to put the ball down at the 15-yard line. Ten yards is all they need the ball to go in order to get the, uh, the ball back. Unless, of course, California touches it beforehand. As they're getting ready for the kickoff here. Another onside kick coming. <coughs> As I guess it's okay for them to be on their hands. Yeah, it must be just a high school rule, I do believe, that you're not allowed to do that. As this kick is off, and it is fumbled. IUP, I believe they have it. And uh, they do. IUP recovers this onside kick with 6.06 to go. It did appear one of IUP's players, I think the official in the back saw that, right in front of all of them standing there. Somebody got smacked California's player right in the face. And I'm surprised the guy standing there didn't see it, but the, the, the judge right in the back of the field saw it and called it. it smacked him right in the face. Not sure how they didn't see that one. And was this before the kick, though, or was it after it? Uh, it, was, it was well after the play. Not sure what they were called, though, because they uh, he just smacked them right in the face. I was kind of surprised no one called it, and then the guy way in the back called it. And referee going talking to Kurt Sinetti, the coach for IUP. They already ejected one player for, for IUP for just throwing down uh, one of the California players, putting his hands to, to the face. Could we see another one? Is the official coming out here? As we're gonna get the call here. It's gonna be illegal motion on the kicking team. And they didn't call the, uh, the the flag, I think, on uh, on the one you're talking about. Uh, but they did call this uh, Not illegal sure motion. What what the, he said they did there, I uh, couldn't quite hear him. Let's see if they don't if they don't get on their hands and knees, that may be what the penalty is on. Let's see what they see what the IEP players do here. Now they're kicking off from the ten yard line. I don't think I've ever seen this. They're backing them up far here. And if you're coaching Eddie, he's asking, "What can my players do?" Michigan may be looking like they're going to win this game. Ohio State has the ball on Michigan five-yard line, 14 of 17 with six seconds to go. It's down on the wire there, and this one is a good kick, but returned there and by Gary Brown at the 20-yard line. So like that, Dylan, California is in the red zone. Yeah, definitely, and uh, not too many times you see a kickoff resulting, an onside kick resulting in the team having the ball in the red zone, but that's what we see here, and uh, Cal... They're just able to run the clock out now and pick a kick an extra point in a field goal. Even if they just kick a field goal, it will be tough for IEP to get back in this one. Well, they're actually going to start at the 21-yard line. So if you're being technical, it's not in the red zone <laughs> yet. Close. Pretty very, close. Though. Very close. As we're keeping an update on the uh, Michigan-Ohio State game as well. Pistol look here for Michael Keir as he sends a man in motion. That's Tom Green to the near side. Keir. Handing it off to Grissom, and Grissom gets back to the, now gets to the 20-yard line, so a gain of one as a little bit of a scrum happening after the play. Yeah, both teams, a lot of emotion here. This is the second time these two rivals have faced each other this season, so uh, emotions are running high on both sides. And again, you know, this will be the second time IEP will have, I believe, fallen to a PSAC team in the playoffs as I believe they lost to Slippery Rock last year as Michigan uh, and Ohio State are tied at 17 after a field goal. So that one may be going into overtime. However, this game, barring a miracle, will not be going into overtime. <laughs> as Keir handing off to Grissom on the outside. Grissom finding the edge, and he's going to step out of bounds at the 15-yard line. And 
and uh, look for him. He he wanted to stay in bounds there. Just tried to tried to pick up that first down. Now they're spotting him for just a short gain on the play. It was close. Uh, I know the coaches would may like him to just slide down here at the end, but uh, it's a third down now third for California. And, third and five from the 16 with five minutes on the clock. IEP, all of their timeouts still remaining. As Kier, it's going to be in the pistol. Kier, sending Green in motion to the far side. Takes a snap, handing off to Grissom. Grissom is going to get taken down for a yard gain. He got wrapped up immediately there. It looked like it might have been number eight, Miles Catlin, the linebacker on the play. Should be fourth down now. See what California decides to do here. The winds are kicking, so a uh, tough call here. See what they try to do. They might just let the clock run on down and then call a timeout with just a few seconds left on the play clock. It looks like William Brazil is going to wait here. It looks like they will call a timeout whenever the clock will run down. As they're going to let this play clock run down all the way down as the game clock itself is going to be at just below four minutes when they call this timeout. And the timeout called there right at the zeros mark. 3.57 the time left here in the game. And California leading 35 to 23. Looking at some scores around the Division II college football playoffs. Again, Shepard beat LIU Post 40 to 21. North Alabama, the one seed in Super Region 2, playing UNC Pembroke, the five seed. They are winning 41 to 17 as North, Ab North Alabama, North Alabama, excuse me. North Greenville, the number six seed, taking on Tuskegee, the number seven seed. North Greenville won 45 to 26. Northwest Missouri State, the one seed, playing Emporia State, number one versus number four, and Northwest Missouri State 31 to 13. Sioux Falls and Harding are tied at 24, number two versus number three. That is in overtime. Ferris State, the number two seed, playing the Colorado Mines, six seed, won 38 to 17. And Texas A&M Commerce, the number four seed, is playing Grand Valley State, the number one seed. Grand Valley State leading 45 to 24. And Dylan, you see California, the one seed, leading 35 to 23 over the IUP five seed. And all the one seeds so far have been living up to their, their reputation as being a one seed. Yeah, definitely. And it does appear California is going for this one. If they pick this one up, <coughs> it'll be tough. But again, you can't afford a big turnover here if you're California. You want to try to take care of the ball. Kier looking to pass. Going to the end zone. This is caught for the touchdown. And a late hit there after the touchdown already happened. But Gary Brown with another great touchdown. And Gary Brown, coming into the game, he lead, led the wide receivers at all NCAA levels in scoring with 126 points. That's the most points by any Cal player since 2005. And you see there, he's just adding to his total now. Yeah, definitely. Just such a such a threat there. He's just such a great athlete and uh, makes it really tough on defenders to stop him. And he picks up a second touchdown of the game. As William Brazil on to kick this extra point. It's up. And it is Good. The score now, California 42, IUP 23 with 3.52 to go in the contest. California leads it big here, and you're watching Vulcans Football and listening to Vulcans Football on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and CU TV. This season, the pride and pageantry of college football. Was that a catch? Oh, yeah! can all be found in one place. He will score! Touchdown! NCAA.com. From the biggest matchups come breakout performances. Keep it one deep. Go! Those game-changing moments live here. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. 
the home of Division II college sports. And welcome back to Adams' Stadium as that kick goes to the one-yard line and is returnable there. And he gets wrapped up immediately, and he gets taken down here at the 14-yard line. Good special teams coverage by California yet again. It definitely. Uh, that's one of the, the Garnett twins there. And take a look back at this touchdown. And Michael Keir had some pressure coming to his backside, but uh, didn't seem to phase him. He's able to find Gary Brown there in the back of the end zone. And uh, just what a what a year Gary Brown has had. It's just simply he's he's really making his case for that Harlan Hill Award here in the uh, Super Region 1. He's one of the finalists here for Super Region 1. I definitely could see him making that, getting that award. Uh, you know, again, all credit to Lenny Williams doing a great job during the season, but with that injury, Gary Brown's still playing. No, he looks like he could be the, that, that finalist and, and, and a good candidate uh, for that. As Mike Petropola under a lot of pressure, and he is sacked on the play. What coverage and good defense by Jordan Bowman. Yeah, Jordan Bowman, nice job there, able to bring him down, just flew off the edge on that one. Take a look at the replay here, but he was in there in the backfield before the play even got started there, and he's able to bring Petropola down. Great job again. Been saying it all year, Jordan Bowman, great threat there for California. Now Luke Krabchak was there too helping out. He wanted to get a piece of uh, Mike Petropola as well as the clock down at 310. IUP backed up in their own end zone area second and 15 from the nine yard line as Petropola looking to pass as he has some room and is going to throw it deep down the field and it is going to be incomplete almost intercepted by the number seven Arnell Farmer Jr. Yeah Arnell Farmer almost had that one uh, tons of pressure again for for Petropola and uh not able to find anyone downfield, but Arnold Farmer almost able to get that interception. Third and 15 from the nine yard line. The clock stopped at 254. <clears throat> the play clock now at seven. Petropola in the gun. Play clock now at one. Just getting it off. A lot of pressure again. Petropola. Looking to throw it deep down the field. This one is complete. And he has the ball. That's Allen Wright. And he gets taken down at the 45-yard line. And again, a great job there by uh, IUP. But there's a flag down, Dylan. Yeah, there is a flag. Barely see that down at the 10-yard line. Everybody's walking back. It appears it may be against IUP. Be tough break for them as they, they had a couple heaves that have gone their way, but this one looks to be coming back. Should be a holding call, I believe. Actually, no, an eligible man downfield uh, is the call coming against IUP. And that kind of happens when your quarterback gets pressured like that. People just start going downfield, and you can't do that. Especially the linemen kind of get lost to where they are in the field, especially on a third down and long, and just uh, one got too far downfield on that one. Yeah, and, and sometimes they don't even mean to, to go downfield like that. It just kind of flows with the ball. I, 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 I kind of never understood that rule, Dylan. Do you, do you understand why that rule would be in place? Yeah, because you could, in theory, throw to one of those guys that are downfield. As... Michael Keir, excuse me, Mike, uh, and he's in the end zone. That's a safety. California scores on defense, and this game is just about over. And Mike Petropola going, getting taken down there by Luke Krabchak. What a job by this defense coming out here. Yeah, definitely. And Luke Rabchek again, just he's been there all season long for the Vulcans, leading them in tackles on the season. Got that MVP last game, and uh, he's able to get a big play there. But his high school team also uh, picked up a big win last night in West Virginia high school football and near my neck of the woods, able to uh, advance to the state championship, beating the three-time defending state champion. So that's big for him. Uh, I know he was excited to saw him on Twitter last night. He was very excited after that one. And we're going to keep it here after that. Wonderful safety. California leads at 44 to 23 and gets the ball back after that safety there. And after they will have to do the old safety punt. 
And Dylan, what a showing by this California team. It didn't start off well. They were down 17 to nothing. And then the icing on the cake, this defensive score. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Luke Rapchak there bringing him down in the back of the end zone. Uh, you the coaches behind us. Oh, man, they're excited. He's uh, excited to go to work tomorrow is what he's, he's <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. They're exactly right. He is uh, – California looks to be advancing here and uh, hosting another playoff game. We should have a lot more students here because Thanksgiving break will not be here. So uh, uh, it should be a great atmosphere next week. California, number one in the conference with scoring defense. They're adding to it there. The number one team in the nation is Harding, and uh, they are in the playoffs still. They're tied with Sioux Falls, as I said, unless that score has since changed. And it has. Harding has defeated, uh, defeated Sioux Falls 27-24 to off a field goal in overtime. As IUP about ready to kick it off here. The safety punt. And it's going to be a fair catch at the 33-yard line for Aaron Terry. Yeah, great, great decision there just to be safe there. Uh, but, again, just a great job by California in this game fighting back. We talked about, talked about it there, the adversity California hasn't faced at all season long. And looking at this final score, you would be tough to believe that California was down 17 to nothing in this one. And they came back, and uh, they're they're uh, done a great job ever since then. Score update in the Ohio State game. Not sure if this is still going on. Ohio State 24, Michigan 17. Still in overtime. Michigan has the ball. They have to try to score a touchdown here and get the extra point. As... California back on offense here with 2.26 to go. Keir handing off to John Franklin. Franklin getting about three yards on the carry. Second down for California. And still 24-17. Uh, still However, they do get the ball to the five-yard line, Dylan. Yeah, looks like a close game there, but uh, California just so impressive what they've been able to do today. Michael Keir passing 23 for 28 with 274 yards passing and four passing touchdowns. Yeah, such a great game there by Michael Keir. Really showed his leadership today. Hand off to John Franklin. Franklin cutting it up now. Is going to get taken down at the 44-yard line. That may be enough for a first down, and then it looks like they're going to spot him short again by about a few inches. <coughs> As it is going, it is a touchdown, excuse me, for Michigan. 23-24, an extra point would tie it. And a two-point conversion would win the game. And Dylan, what do you decide to do if you're Michigan? Uh, I think Jim Harbaugh is going to go for it. <laughs> he's just that type of guy. <laughs> I think he's going to, I think he is going to go for that one. And Michael Keir in a pistol, sending Jordan Dandridge across the field. As Keir hands it off up the middle to Franklin. Franklin gets a first down, and Dylan, that should wrap this contest up. Yeah, it definitely should. Maybe one more play in this one. But again, just great showing by California today. Very impressive win. Beating your rival by 21 points in the playoff the second time of the season. Tough to beat a team twice, and they come out the second time with even better performance than the first one. Yeah, even better performance than the first one. <coughs> As they, they're going to wait for the clock to get past 30 seconds. And Michael Keir can just take the snap in whenever he wants to end this game. Victory formation complete. California gets the win 44-23 to over their arch rival IUP. And... Showing some love by both of these teams here. Coach Gary Dunn keeps his dream season alive, 11-0. IUP will drop to 10-2, and, and their season is done. Yes, and we will be back here next week as California will host Shepard in a huge matchup there in the regional finals. Uh, great, great matchup there for both teams. Yeah, it will be a wonderful matchup. Uh, and we're not sure if we were going to be able to do the TV broadcast uh, 
ESPN3 may be here. Who knows? Uh, we will definitely find out. And you can follow all of this action on Twitter. We will tell you what's going to happen, if we're doing the game or not, uh, via Twitter and Facebook. Look for this game on YouTube. Thank you all for watching this game. California gets a huge win there. They move on to the regional finals. California takes on Shepard, the number one versus the number three team. And it'll be a showdown as Shepard made it all the way, I believe, to the championship game last year and ended up falling, I believe, to Northwest Missouri State. And it's going to always a tough game between Shepard and Cal. It was a great game here. Dylan, any more final thoughts uh, on this game? Just such an impressive performance for California coming back in this one after being down early. Just a, a great, is a, just another piece of the pie in this season. They've been able to show us all kinds of stuff and never showed us the re resiliency, and they showed it today. A big, big win for California. California gets the total offense here, 364 yards to 344. They get the win. IEP falls here. The final score, 44 to 23. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening here on both the Vulcan Sports Radio Network and on CUTV and CalVulcans.com slash watch. For all of the members of our crew, thank you. Thank you for coming and doing this game on this Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks to our director, Gary Smith, for producing a wonderful show. Thank you to my uh, analysts here, Dylan Goday, again, always doing a great job. Again, thanks for everyone watching. I'm Anthony Giacchino. Hope to see you next week when California hosts Shepard.